Okay. Uh, good evening, all. Audible. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. Yes, ma'am. So uh, let's quickly uh, do a revision of uh, quiz one syllabus. So the syllabus is the uh, weeks one to four. Um, we can split it as two weeks, two weeks for each revision session, or because three and four is a little loaded, uh, we can do uh, one and two and maybe start off with at least the vector space definition and some examples. We'll anyway uh, go based on how you guys respond. Yes, ma'am. Can let me share screen. Find the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, so let me just write it down. Weeks one to four. Okay. Okay, so let's start off with uh, what a vector is. Vector in R two or R three. How does a vector in R two look like? X comma y. Two and a half. Two components. Right. And how will you add two vectors in R? R2 plus Z, comma Y plus W. And how will you do scalar multiplication? Yeah. So this is how we do addition and scalar multiplication on R2. So by vector, we mean that they are elements of a vector space. Now that you know R2 is a vector space, they are all elements of a vector space and hence they are called vectors. Similarly, in R3, we have vectors with three components. Again, addition is component-wise and uh, scalar multiplication is component-wise. Okay. And then we have matrices. What is a matrix? Uh, arranging the vectors in columns. In columns, yeah. columns. So you can arrange the vectors as uh, rows or columns, right? Yes. Yeah, yes, it's an array of numbers put together a11, a12, etc. a1, n. You arrange elements in rows and columns. That's an uh, that's a matrix. Okay, so what is the order of a matrix? A number of rows, by number of columns. columns. Yeah. So it is said to be of order m cross n if uh, it has m, m rows m and, n and n columns. N columns. So since we are putting uh, vectors as uh, columns or uh, rows, matrices, how do you add two matrices? Component, Component wise. wise. Yeah. They are entry wise. Wise. The okay. corresponding entries are being added. That's how you add two matrices. And you can add two matrices only if they are of the same order. Because you can add two vectors only if they belong to the same vector space in the sense that R2 or R3, only if they belong to uh, if they have the same number of components, only then you can add them. Similarly, uh, you can add two matrices only if they are of the same order. Okay, so similarly, you can subtract two matrices and you can do scalar multiplication on matrices. So, how does the scalar multiplication work? Each component, each component, so all elements yeah. scalar. If I have a two cross two matrix, then every component is going to get multiplied with that alpha. Fine. When can we multiply two matrices? If the number, number of columns number of rows rows columns. A equals number of columns in columns B. Columns of the first matrix equals to the number yeah. of columns. If A is an M cross N matrix, then B has to be an N, N cross matrix. something matrix. Yeah. The number of columns of the first matrix should be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. And the order of the resulting matrix is going to be M cross P. P. So you cannot multiply any two matrices. You can multiply only if they satisfy 
this condition that the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. Um, even if A, B, the product A, B is well defined, it's not necessary that B, A is well defined, right? For B, A, the number of columns of B should be equal to the number of rows of A. So even if one of the products is defined, it's not guaranteed that the other is defined. So you cannot even think of these two being equal all the time. A, B and B, A need not always be equal. Whereas in numbers, we know that X into Y is equal to Y into X. If you take two numbers, you can multiply them in any order, but that does not work with matrices. Fine. Uh, yes. Yeah. Which type of matrix A B equal to B A? No. Uh, you cannot tell uh, one specific. You cannot tell one if and only if condition. Let's take uh, scalar matrices for example. You take any matrix B, and A is any scalar matrix. Okay. Then this is going to work, right? This is always going to be yes, equal to. Yes, ma'am. Because if A is a scalar matrix, I can write it as some alpha times identity. Yeah. So A, B is going to be alpha times identity into B. So I can write this as alpha times B. Mm -hmm. Or, okay, I can write it as alpha times IB, which I can write it as alpha times BI. Which I can write it as alpha B, B times alpha I. I can take the number inside, right? Because yes. I'm just multiplying matrix. This is, this is BA. Yeah. Yeah, clear, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So this is just one case where this happens. Hmm. This is not the only case. Right? Okay. With inverses as well. It's ah, yeah. If you have if B is the inverse of A, then these two commute. Yeah. Right? There's no if and only if condition for this. Okay. If this happens, then you say that the two matrices commute. That's all. A, B is equal to B. A. Fine. What is A transpose? The rows are written as columns. Yeah. If column A is an M cross N matrix, then A transpose is an N cross M matrix. You just interchange the rows and columns of the matrix. So these are with matrices. Mm, then uh, what is, how will you find the determinant of a matrix? Ma'am, a matrix has to be a square matrix to find. Yeah, first of all, you should have a square matrix. Only then you can find the determinant of a matrix. How will you find the determinant? We expand with respect to any row or column and we yes. multiply each element in that row or column with its cofactor and we take the sum. Right. So let's take an example. Okay. So what is a minor? Minor is when you don't have subgroup. Minus the row and the one column corresponding one that the balance remaining is the minor. A right. sub matrix. Yeah. So if you are looking for a minor of some entry A I J, you remove the row and column in which this entry appears and you calculate the determinant of the sub matrix right so so in this case i'll be cancelling out the i row and the j column so if i'm looking for the minor of pi i'm going to remove the second row and the second column and calculate the determinant of the sub matrix that remains so this is what minus 21 this is the minor of phi what is cofactor Minor, minor into minus oh. one power i plus j, yeah. minus one power i plus j into yeah. the minor of a i j, right? Yes. So what is the cofactor of phi? Uh, minus minus twenty one. Minus twenty one. Yeah. Minus twenty one only, madam. Minus two. Minus one power two plus two into minus twenty one. So this is going to be minus twenty one. What about uh, this entry, the four? Here, this one. Minus one to the minus power. One plus whole power. So the minus That's one to power. One raised to power. 24. 24. Right. It will be 24. So you remove the row and column in which it appears. Minus one power 2 plus 1 into the determinant of 2380. So that's going to be minus 24 and a minus 1. So 24. 
that's how you calculate the minor and cofactor so what is the cofactor matrix replace each element with its cofactor yeah it's the matrix of cofactors each corresponding whatever is the entry you are looking at in the cofactor matrix that is going to be the cofactor of the corresponding entry in the matrix so in the cofactor matrix you have all the cofactors arranged in order of uh, in the respective order right so what is the adjoint matrix transpose transpose of the cofactor matrix transpose of the cofactor matrix and now in this way we are heading to find the inverse what is the inverse 1 by 1 upon determinant into adjoint yeah to adjoint of a you can define this only if determinant of a is not equal to 0 in which case the matrix is called an invertible matrix or non singular so if it's an invertible matrix or a non singular matrix then you can find the inverse of the matrix which is got by finding out uh, adjoint of a and dividing it by determinant of a this is how you find the inverse of a matrix ma'am i have one question here ha huh. uh, regarding 3 by 3 matrix and more means uh, order greater than uh, greater than 2 okay mm. uh, so while calculating minor okay mm. Mm. so we are just considering that sub matrix right yes uh, so can you please write down one 3 into 3 matrix any random this one ah uh, yes yes this one okay so for minor so suppose uh, for minor Uh, so for first one one okay one row mm. and one column you will write minor as five uh, six eight zero right but yeah. suppose while we are calculating determinant of this matrix whole matrix A mm. so we will do like this right one into five uh, that sub uh, that determinant of that sub matrix right right minus two mm. uh, four six seven zero determinant of four six zero okay right right. Okay, so uh, in question or in general, uh, so we will always uh, look for one one. Uh, I mean, we will always go from first row, first column, first row, second column, and first row, third column, right? In usual determinants. Right. Right, na. So in uh, exam or uh, is there any specific? Uh, they will ask regarding uh, calculated determinant by second row, first column. Uh, that that way also we can find the determinants, right? Yeah, yeah. You can find out by any way, right? But What the is the problem if the question is asked that way? Uh, determinant will be the same or different in that case. The determinant will always be the same. The way of calculating only will be different. See, it's in general, A I J. If you are expanding along the say first row, it's going to mm -hmm. be A I J summation A or uh, A one J into the cofactor of A one J. Correct. So, this is along the first row, right? Mm -hmm. So the J is going to vary. One, two, One, three. One, two, three. It's yes. going G to vary R. along each column, right? Mm -hmm. So if you not just this, you can also expand along any column. In that case, if you are going to expand along the first column, it's going to be A I one into mm -hmm. the cofactor of A I one, where I varies. So it's going to be calculated along this way. right okay so whatever way you do you choose any row or any column to expand your determinant is always going to be a fixed number it's not going to be different achha, achha. based on which row you choose okay if so it's going I mean, to be different then that's not one thing. fixed number right how can you calculate the inverse if one for you you get one determinant someone else uses another row and gets another determinant right but generally we we look for a uh, first row first column right general suppose right now if you want to calculate no, determinant like see if the matrix is going to be this mm -hmm. which row will you choose or which column will you choose second column second row second, second column, column or the second row second any row. one right mm -hmm. that's because there are more zeros there right so the yes, yes. many so many terms in this summation is going to become zero Mm -hmm, sure, and uh, in case of four by four matrix, uh, we will uh, check. Uh, we will take the matrix of that uh, sub matrix, which is of order three by three, right? Determinant of three yeah. by three, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. 
ma'am uh, yes. non singular matrix means the determinant is not equal to 0 yes invertible matrix singular means determinant equal to 0 non singular means uh, determinant not equal to 0 okay ma'am yeah. why it is called non singular ma'am this is called singular uh, the other one that is why this is called non singular okay okay so singular means in some sense uh, one okay one. i don't know maybe because i am in the math field uh, singular uh, is associated with uh, zero being uh, what you can somehow generate zero using this matrix so uh, it seems more obvious to me that way but uh, where else do we have the term singular uh, for the, for defining uniqueness or something so you don't have uniqueness TV. here, right? When it is singular, uh -huh. can, yeah. can can we say that if determinant is um, if it is not zero, then mm -hmm. singular means it will have only uh, it will not only have the it it won't have the infinite solution like okay. unique solutions. So unique solution is this case. Yes, when the determinant yeah, is that, not equal yeah, to that, zero. Uh. Oh, yeah, that is why I'm saying that uh, determinant is not equal to zero means it will have unique solution in such a way. Can we say so? But it's non singular there, no, not singular. Ma'am, when the de determinant of a matrix is zero, then only in that case it is singular. It is the case. No, you call it singular, yes. A, the matrix A is called singular if determinant is zero. Yeah. And ma'am, why does it call you have? Uh, I don't know the reason for why, but this singular term is always associated when zero is going to, like, see, you can get zero out of the matrix. See, you multiply this vector with uh, matrix with some vector, you're going to get zero, right? For some non-zero vector. That is when the determinant is zero, right? See, if the determinant is zero, AX is equal to zero has a non-trivial solution, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. So you can somehow generate the zero vector using some non-zero vector. That is very no, I think basically because the matrix cannot have an inverse, that's why it's called singular. Yeah, but why the term singular? That is the question, right? Ma'am, could you... Uh, because you can't create an inverse of You can't that. create an inverse of it. So like... It's only that matrix. Multiplicative so it's not. And could you show the example of one, uh, one thing? What example? Yeah, ma'am. Now we are told that uh, you generate some non non zero vector for that singular matrix that will give zero. Yeah. So you take AX is equal to zero. That means it's a homogeneous equation. Yeah, it always has a solution, right? Yes, ma'am. It either has infinitely many solutions or a unique, unique solution. solution. Right. Yeah, when it has infinitely many solutions, what can you tell about determinant of A? Uh, determinant of A equal to 0. Yeah. That's what is singular, right? Zero, that is unique. Yeah. Ah, that's what is a singular matrix. It has infinitely many solutions means what? You have a non-zero vector, which when multiplied with a matrix, gives you equal to 0, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ah. That's yeah, I got it, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. You can generate the zero vector zero using vector. a non-zero vector. Okay. Yeah. So singular and non-singular terms are only for square matrices. Yes, yes. Only when determinants are involved. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Ma'am, if determinant of a rectangular matrix is asked, then we have to use the Gaussian elimination method. No. How will you find determinant of a rectangular matrix you have determinants only for square matrices okay ma'am how do you how will you define determinant for rectangular matrices you cannot right okay yeah so this is only for square matrices n cross n okay ma'am yeah uh, ma'am uh, we discuss uh, matrix multiplication like uh, huh. we take the first matrix row and second matrix column and uh, adding the correspond right but uh, one of the questions shows a uh, different types of multiplication. Could you explain that multiplication like uh, matrix times column and uh, lot lot? Ah, okay. So, uh, which question was it? Can you quickly tell me? It was some activity question, right? 
Yeah, ma'am, something like that. Uh, that is in week one or week two. I don't know really, but uh, the question is asked mm -hmm. like that. Uh, so that is not a normal multiplication they are asking. They are different type of multiplication. Between no, the there also it is the exactly same thing, but you are just writing it in terms of columns. Let me quickly. Yeah, so I have one question, clarification I needed. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you said is if determinant of A is 0, then there are many solutions. If determinant of so A, A is not is 0. equal to 0. Oh. Okay. Mm. Yeah, AX equal to zero. Okay, so simultaneous ah. equation. So if AX equal to zero, many solutions are there. If AX is not zero, then there is a unique solution. But ah. is there any way to find out if the equations don't have any solution? No, no, it's a homogeneous system. Homogeneous system always has a solution, no? Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. So uh, AQ 1.2 question 7. If A is a square matrix of order 2 whose first column is denoted by C1, C2, I guess you're talking about that, right? Uh, Ma'am, could you again tell that name? So, uh, question. A One second, let me share. Uh, My screen visible? Yes, ma'am. This yes. question, right? Uh, no, ma'am. This this is not. Actually, they are given two matrices explicitly, ma'am. Okay. Like, uh, ma'am, please tell this question also. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, let's do this and then by then, can you look which question is that and tell me? Yeah, yes, ma'am. I will. Yeah. I will go through it. So here, uh, A is a square matrix of order 2, whose first column is denoted by C1 and second column is de denoted by C2. So I have a 2 cross 2 matrix. So what, what can you tell about C1? C1 is 1 vector, C2 is another vector. How many components will C1 have? 2. 2. Yeah. So this is the first column. This is going to have two components. Say A is going to be like A, B, C, D. So A, C, this is C1. And B, D, this is C2. Okay. And then what is given? B is given. B is equal to B11. Okay. B is B11, B12, B21, B22. What should we check? First column of A, B. Second column of A, B. Okay. So how are we going to multiply A into B? C1, C2, B11, B12, B21, B22. So I can write C1 as AC, C2 as BD, right? Yes, ma'am. So when I multiply, what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply this row with this column, right? Yes, ma'am. So it's going to be A into B11 plus B, plus B into B21. Two ones. And, then <coughs> and then the next component is going to be C into B11, A into, into B12 B12. plus B into B22. And then C into B11 B11 plus D into B21. And C into B12 plus D into B22. I need to write this in terms of C1 and C2. Can I this as one vector? OK. These two together as one vector. And these two together as another vector, the first yes. column as one vector, the second column as another vector, right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. A, B, 1, 1 plus B, B, 2, 1, C, B, 1, 1 plus D, B, 2, 1. So this is going to be my first vector. And my second vector is going to be the second column. So yeah, what is this first column? This is the first column. Can I write this in terms of C1 and C2? 
Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I can write this as B1. A C into B one one, right? Yes, yes ma'am. Plus B D into B two one, right? Yes, ma'am. So B one one C one plus B two one C two. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Similarly, the second column. Okay, so did you find out which question is that? Yes, ma'am. That is graded oh. assignment two, question number four. But on that question, that is really easy. But uh, when I solve this question, I go through this different types of multiplication. That is so. Uh, I think four types of matrix multiplication, like column by row or something like that. So I didn't get it. Um, oh, what are those? I that is. Oh. It's little bit okay. Can you can you tell me what the matrices are? Okay, ma'am. Uh, I will tell row by row, one to one. Ah. Okay. Two five one. Ah. Four five C. Okay. Uh, and then vector is x one, x two, x three. That is called. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ah. Um. Which is equal to thousand, two thousand, and D. Okay, okay. So we need to find C and D. That is that is we solve, ma'am. But uh, first option is look like this from the given comprehension question. Second uh, option uh. is look like uh, x one, x two, x three is in the right side, left side, like row row wise. X one, x two. Transpose. Yeah. See, you have A X is equal to B. So A X transpose. Is equal to B transpose, right? Yes, ma'am. What is A X transpose? A transpose. X transpose. Transpose. Ah. Transpose into A transpose. A B transpose is B transpose A transpose. Reverse order. So here you will have X transpose A transpose. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, ma'am.
so every row gets multiplied by k every column gets multiplied by k so when there is a number see we know this right determinant of a b lambda c lambda d is going to be equal to lambda times a b determinant of a b c d right yes ma'am <clears throat> whenever there is a common element in a row or column it, you can take it out right yes ma'am now you have here also yes ma'am so from there you can take one lambda out right yes ma'am so that's how you get that k power n <clears throat> because every element is being multiplied by that scalar so yes, ma'am ma here here you have taken the lambda from first row into lambda from first row a uh, second row second row yeah so lambda into lambda is lambda square lambda square yes okay and for a, if it is multiplied by single row only so we are just uh, getting common it will be just lambda ha ah, yes only single so it depends yeah. on uh, okay okay so here ka means how many it rows it gets by, multiplied with ha uh, it is multiplying by here ka means it is multiplying by each and every element hmm. yeah only one Yes. It has a two into two, three into three, four into four. Hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, there's ma also a relation between the adjoint determinant and the determinant of the original matrix. Yeah. <laughs> determinant of adjoint of A. What is it equal to? Determinant. Uh, determinant, determinant of A is n, n minus one. Yeah. N minus one. N n n minus one. And n minus one. Order of the determinant. It's not difficult. You needn't remember things. See, determinant of adjoint of A is equal to determinant of uh, what? Determinant of A into A inverse, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This this much you know. Adjoint of A is determinant of A into A inverse. And you know that when there is a scalar that's multiplied, it comes out n times, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. And determinant of a inverse is one by determinant of a. Yes. So nothing oh, to remember. Yeah, minus. Yeah, you can formula. just derive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can just derive it. Fine. Yes, ma'am. And then what else, uh... ma'am? I have a question uh, huh. regarding transpose. So let's say A is a three by three matrix, hmm? and it is saying that B is uh, minus of A transpose. Okay. B is another matrix which, which is minus A transpose. Then hmm. I need to do transpose first transpose of A. Then I need to add minus sign in any hmm. row or column, right? Hmm. Okay. What is K times A? It is uh, k is multiplied in uh, only one row or one column. In each no, element. no, no. It's multiplied in every element. That's how. That's what I asked, right? How is scalar multiplication defined? See, how do you do scalar multiplication on vectors? Every component of the vector is being multiplied, right? Yes, yes. So, how does it work for matrices? You have two vectors put together. and each vector is getting multiplied by that scalar alpha a means alpha alpha gets multiplied with every element of the matrix then when i am taking out uh, as a common then i should get the uh, k to the power n uh, right that's what we wrote here no determinant of k is k power hmm. n into determinant of a okay ma'am ah yes Uh, what does n stands for? K to the, the order power. of the matrix. Ah, uh, okay. A is an n cross n matrix. That n. Ma'am, uh, how determinant of determinant of a is equal to determinant of a to the power n? Determinant of. Determinant of determinant of a. No, no. From here, you're asking. Yeah, yeah. So actually, determinant of determinant of a into a inverse, we are. determinant of ab so we um, determinant of a into determinant of b so my question is determinant no, of no 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 this is a number this is the k this is not ab determinant of a is a number it's not a matrix yeah yeah yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am ma'am ah so this is k times k uh, sorry k power n times n determinant, determinant of, of a inverse a inverse 
मैम मैम देर यू डिड फॉर लैमडा इफ लैमडा इज मल्टीप्लाइड टू वन रो सो यू हैव टेकन लैमडा आउट इन व्हेन वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग डिटरमाइंट डिटरमाइंट वी कैन डू दैट नॉट जनरल यस इन जनरल या या दिस इज ओनली फॉर डिटरमिनेंट्स या वर्टिकल बार नॉट फॉर मैट्रिसेस इन मैट्रिसेस व्हेन यू टेक द लैमडा आउट इट मींस इट इज बीइंग मल्टीप्लाइड विद एवरी एंट्री राइट ओके Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. I'm in mean that adjoint formula. Determinant of adjoint of a mm. equals to determinant. Can we calculate by that determinant formula only for the determinant of adjoint of a, if we have a adjoint of a matrix? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. If you know the determinant of a, obviously, okay. Uh, if you know the determinant of a, you can just use this to calculate determinant of adjoint of a. You needn't no, calculate no. that joint. No, I am not asking that. I am asking that if we have a joint of a, if we calculated a joint of uh, a, then uh. from that matrix only we can calculate determinant by normal formula. Right. That you are asking is. instead of doing that, if you can cal- use this formula to calculate, right? No, no. We can use uh-huh. that formula, normal one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, see, if you are given determinant of A and you are asked for determinant of adjoint of A, there is no need for you to yeah, calculate adjoint of A, A, right? Because you know this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ma'am, we'll proceed. Ma'am, there are more complicated topics ahead. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, ma'am, this session is for only week one and week two. No, not. Ma'am, you are not audible. Your audio is not coming. Your audio is breaking, ma'am. Ma'am, you are not audible. I am got disconnected. Mo bol bi. Ma'am, you are not audible. Please. Just wait, ma'am. ma'am. We'll we'll talk. Okay, this session, ma'am, initially set for week one and two. Because yes. there is one more session at twenty four. Yes. Ma'am yes. said that she would actually start with week three, just the first half, or just just the starting. Okay, ma'am, we we'll cover week three and week four. No, no. Uh, only the vector space part, the definition. Like, if we have time, based on time. how much we finish, I we might start. Yes. Yeah. If not, more. then. mock paper discussion i think another session was for are we guys done this today's ga4 permitted yeah yes yes let's let's let and how are you people feeling with ga4 and ga5 they are really difficult right mm. yeah yeah yes. they are pretty yes. difficult and week 6 struggling with the gone. With vector space and all these things, I'm really struggling there. Week three and week four are also yeah. very confusing. Am I audible? Is... Yeah, ma'am. Yes, yes, sorry, ma'am. I lost connection. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was asking that uh, will we cover only week one and week two? No, 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 no. Not like that. It depends on how fast we can go. If you have doubts, we'll. But at least week one and two we should finish. Okay, and the rest will be finished on twenty fourth, right? Ah, uh, yeah. So if we do fast, we can do a lot of vector space today, and in that case, in that way, you will ha- you can ask more doubts on vector spaces on the Friday session. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, I think it will be better if you cover all week in this session, and on twenty fourth you take all doubts. No, it's so not. There, 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 there are many who are not as good as you are. So let's. Have yeah, let's continue. Everybody, yeah. Yeah. Is my screen visible? 
yes yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so how will you solve a system of linear equations first of all how will you represent a system of linear equations in matrix form ax equals to b ax equals yeah. to b so what does a represent coefficient coefficient matrix yeah. the coefficient matrix the order is m cross n what does that represent m equals to number, number of rows equal to number of variables ha this yeah. is equations the number of rows represent the number of equations and the number of columns represent the number of variables, variables. Number of variables. Uh, and x is the vector of all variables and b is the right hand vector so uh, given a system of linear equations you can write it in matrix form as ax is equal to b and there are multiple ways to solve this so one way is if the coefficient matrix is invertible right determinant of a is not equal to 0 then you can use the cramer's rule right yes ma'am yes, ma yes, how ma do we solve using cramer's rule uh, for we replace the finding x and we replace, replace, we replace the, the, the constant matrix in the column column place of x i right so if you want to find out the value of the variable x i in the coefficient matrix a you replace the i to column that corresponds to the variable x i with the right hand vector that is denoted by axi you calculate its determinant and divide it by determinant of determinant the matrix a. so in this case there is always a unique solution right yes ma'am yes ma'am so the coefficient matrix is invertible then we always have a unique solution and that unique solution can be got by using the cramer's rule or you can find if the determinant is non zero then you can find the inverse of the matrix and multiply it with b yes. this way also yes, you can get the solution yes ma'am ma'am when determinant is equal to 0 we have unique solution no when determinant is equal to 0 unique solution is not at all possible there there will be infinite many solutions. infinite or no solution, no solution depending on the case ma'am can you explain the concept of unique solution and infinite many solutions ah by using ro ro echelon form is linear it linear equation system of linear equation ah okay so yeah i will do it using uh, ro echelon form so before that what are the elementary row operations mom switching two rows adding adding a scalar uh, adding a adding a multiple, multiple, of, one one multiple, multiple of one to another and scalar multiple scalar multiple. right you are allowed to interchange rows. two rows interchange so you can interchange i throw and j throw this is the operation that we represented okay. and you can replace a row with a scalar multiple times another row uh, you can add a row to scalar multiple times another row and you can replace a row with that or you can replace a row by constant constant times, times that row right yes, so you can multiply yes, a row by a non zero constant you can interchange two rows you can add a row to a scalar multiple times another row these are the elementary row operations and what effect does it have on the determinant when i interchange two rows what happens to the determinant negative, negative. it gets multiplied by minus 1 right yes ma'am and what happens when we do the second operation same no change. there's no change And what happens when we do the third operation? Not c to the power n. You are replacing only one row with c times this row. Yes, so you, the determinant gets multiplied by c, not c power n, just c. Fine. So, so we are only. Ah, when you are doing it multiple times, then each time you are going to get a c out. Ma'am, I have one question here oh. in the row transformation. So let's say there is a three by three matrix. I uh, want to uh, transform the row three, R three. Okay. So if I see that by uh, subtracting row two and row three, I am mm -hmm. getting zero zero matrix in row three. So should I do R three dot R three dash equal to R three minus R two or R three dash equal to R two minus R three? So you re if you're replacing R I, you keep R I as it is, and then do the operation on the other. Okay, okay. So, so this is the first element should be R I. Uh, ah, this, yeah. This. Then whatever uh, you do, goes, subtraction the, or multiplying by a constant, all that you do to the other row. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. 
Ma'am, and in questions, they are giving type 1, type 2, type 3. Do we need to memorize like which is type 1, which is type 2? No, no, no. If we are giving no. type 1, type 2, type 3, we will mention what is type 1, okay. type 2, and type 3. Ma'am. Yeah. Specifically, yes. we don't uh, ah. Ma'am, if you do second uh, type uh, operation n times on uh, different rows, still it remains unchanged. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ma'am, I have one question. Huh. Uh, can you please go to mock mock week one and two? Mock uh, regarding okay. the system of linear equations. Uh, okay. We, uh, yes. Uh, can you please show the screen? It's, I think uh, first question only. Sec which question? Uh, first one. Mock uh, uh, week one and two. Ah, uh, okay. I'll I'll write it down here. Yes, yes, sure. Ah. Uh, what is the doubt? Uh, one minute. Huh? Uh, just so uh, we have different diagrams, right? In third column. Ah, right. So, uh, so what is the quickest way uh, to determine which which has infinitely many solution, unique solution? Because we we have, we know one way that uh, you just uh, solve the equations x y z, and ah. based on that, uh, we will come to know that it, it has uh, uh, infinitely many solutions or no uh, no solution. Okay. Yeah. So, what so if you have two way? planes. Okay. They mm -hmm. can either intersect or not intersect, right? Yes, correct. When they don't intersect, will they have a solution? No. That's because they are parallel planes. That's when they don't intersect, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you have two planes and they intersect, then what happens? It's a straight line. They have a solution. There is a solution. In fact, there is a line of intersection, right? Yes, you take no. two books in your hand, two books, the two notebooks that are closed. You just keep them in that intersecting position. You have a line of intersection, right? It's not a point, right? So that's the infinitely many solutions because any point on that line is the solution, and there are infinitely many points on the line. And is it possible that two planes intersect at a point? So, how is it possible? Two planes, like you take two notebooks, is it possible for two notebooks to intersect at exactly one point? No, man. Uh, yeah, one is on top of the other and orthogonal. Oh, no, no, the entire so plane even then you have a line, right? Line, yeah. And uh, what about the unique solution? So we will. What is it? Uh, unique solution in case of three linear equations or what? See, you have three variables. If you want a unique solution, there are three unknowns. So to determine all the three values uniquely, you need at least three equations. Okay, correct. The two equations, you cannot determine three values. Uh -huh, yes. oh. So that's what happens even geometrically. The two planes intersect. Okay, this is a really bad diagram, but this is the so ma'am. Can you please show that uh, in that uh, diagram, in that question only, there is a diagram. Okay. Yes. Let me. Along with equation, there is there are, there is a diagram also. Mm. Ma'am, your screen is not visible. Yeah. Yeah, I stopped sharing and I. Now is it visible? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. So here it's going to intersect. See, in this portion, the intersection is probably not clear, but eventually it's going to intersect, right? Because they are not parallel to each other. The first one. In the so second the first... one, they are parallel to each other. So they are never going to intersect. Okay. So for the second one is no solution. And the yeah. first one is infinitely many solution. Correct? Yes. Because okay. they when two planes intersect, they intersect along a line. Mm -hmm. Correct. And suppose the there is an option of unique solution, so it will have uh, three questions, right? Here. At least three planes it should have. Three yes. planes, yes. Okay, for unique solution. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Got it. When, when there are three variables, right? When, if there are yeah. two variables, then? Two means two is enough. No, two equations are enough, right? To get a unique solution. Ah, then the two equations and two variables uh, is enough to get the unique solution also. Yeah. In that case, the this ah, particular even that does not lines. guarantee. There are only two does, lines. It does not yeah, yeah. guarantee a unique solution, but yes. But a given situation, then you need three planes, which is not shown here. Ah, you can always yeah. Uh, yeah, skip this. You have only two equations. Ma'am, when two lines, ma'am, when two lines intersect, then we have a unique solution. 
right when two lines intersect you have a unique solution but, when but it may all be, all also be the case that both the equations represent the same line right then you have infinitely many solutions okay and oh. something like this x plus y is equal to 1 2x plus 2y is equal to 2 but both represent the same line right can but you please can. mute if you're not talking to me Say, okay, okay. But when to place it? Everybody to go mute. Mute everyone, ma'am. Please mute. Mute everyone, madam. Please. Yeah, yeah. I've muted. Allow one by one. Who's ever raise their hands? Otherwise, it'll waste your time only. Yeah. What is the doubt? But uh, when to plane intersect, there there are infinitely many solutions. Yes. When okay. two planes intersect, so there are infinitely, infinitely many solutions. So this is that. This was the difference between line and plane. Yes. Okay. Okay. Ma'am, and when three planes are intersecting, is it uh, always uh, we will get point or maybe line? No. See, out of the three planes, two planes may represent uh, may be represented by the same equation, right? Yeah. Then, then it is the uh, infinitely many solutions. Yeah. In uh, if if all three are different, uh, ah, so then you will get a unique solution. One point of intersection. Ma'am, three planes can also intersect at a point, right? It's not necessary to have three lines intersecting at a point. Three, ah, uh, three planes, yes. Three yes, lines, you may still have no solution, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yes. Ma'am, huh. ma suppose we have four equations mm -hmm. and three variables. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would be, ma'am, the solution? No, it depends on what the equations are, right? Anything can happen. Let me take three equations and two variables. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Same situation. See, here. If you take x minus y is equal to 1, now you have a unique solution, right? Because these two represent the same yes, equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you solving this, you will get a unique solution. But what yes, if I if I put this? x plus y is equal to 2. Then there is no solution, right? No solution. Because here yeah. and here you have a contradiction. So based on the number of equations, we can't say the solution. You cannot tell anything. Yeah. But one thing you can tell. If the yeah. number of equations is less than the number of variables, definitely you are not going to get a unique solution. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Because you still don't have the needed information. Yeah. Thanks, okay. ma'am. Okay. So let's quickly do what is REF and RREF. What is REF? Reduce. What do we do that? Uh, do in that? Ma'am, we use elementary row operations. Ah, no, no. When do you say a matrix is in row echelon form? And then the first element is one. Not the first element. The first non-zero element. Elements the leading non-zero yeah. element of each row should be yeah. 1. They are called the pivots. It should be 1. And then the pivots should be to the right. It, the, it should keep going towards the right end of the matrix. Right? Yes, so yes. pivot in each row should be to the right of the pivot in the previous row. Yes, yes, and then Bill all nine. zero rows should be zero at the bottom. bottom. You have non-zero rows and then the zero rows. And then the, all these three conditions put together is REF. In addition, it is an RREF if below the pivot, pivot is the only non in that column. In that column. Ah. So you have a Ma'am in last Ma'am in third property, oh, all no, non-zero no, rows no. will be there. All non-zero rows will be above the zero rows. Okay. Hmm. So in RREF, and all the all the entries pivot. above the pivots should be zero. Right. Yes. Columns containing the pivots should have only one non-zero entry. So you'll have a pivot, and then everywhere above and below you will all have zeros. When you don't have a pivot in a column, you needn't worry about it. But columns containing the pivot should have exactly one non-zero entry. That is the pivot itself. Mm -hmm. So in REF, you find a pivot. Below it, everything should be 0, like this. When it is an RREF, above also it should be 0. Above and below it should be 0. 
fine yes so ref is in some sense looks like upper triangular rref in some sense looks like identity yes and when there is no pivot ma'am and there is no pivot no problem no say uh, you have 0 1 2 0 0 0 0 Which column contains the pivot? Second column. Second column. Second column. Yeah, you needn't bother. What happens to the other columns? This yes. is the only column you should be bothered. Be bothered about. What happens now? Ma'am, so is this a row echelon form or reduced row echelon form? No, you tell me. Now is it in row echelon form or reduced row echelon? Row echelon. Row echelon. This is yeah. row echelon form because two is there above one. Ah, so there is a pivot there. here. But this entry is non-zero. If I had made this entry zero, then it would be in R R F. Yes. I'm not bothered about what these entries are because there is no pivot in this column. Isn't okay. Okay. Yeah. Ma'am, Ma'am, if we reach still row echelon form, is it uh, guaranteed that we can derive reduced row echelon also, or uh, will it get stuck there? Even any matrix, there? you can always convert it into row echelon uh -huh. form and reduced row echelon form. Yeah, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, ma'am. Ah, uh, here like first column is zero zero zero, and in the mm. last row also zero zero zero, right? Mm. Now, ah, uh, if we if we are going to calculate the rank of huh. this, huh? It will be two or it will be ah uh, like one. Rank is two. Rank is two, right? The number of non-zero rows in uh, row echelon form. Or uh, non non zero column also we can say no 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 no, no. you are doing a row echelon form so you will count the number of non zero rows. Yeah. Ma'am, in so this case, what is a dependent variable and what is independent? Ma'am, the rank will be two, right? Yeah. The columns column which do not contain any pivots columns. are uh, independent variables. This is an independent variable. This is an independent variable. These two contain pivots, so these will be dependent variables. Count of pivot is also rank, no, ma'am? Yeah, the number of pivots is equal to the rank. Sorry, I couldn't understand, ma'am. You can Please just please. say that like Hello? every non-zero row has a pivot in row echelon form, so it should. Yes. So by that logic, like both are technically the same thing. Which two? Number of pivots and number of non-zero rows. Ah, right. So I was telling this rank is equal to the number of pivots. You have two pivots here, so it means that you are going to have two non-zero rows. If there was a third non-zero row, definitely it should have a pivot, right? And for yeah. column, we also say that uh, number of uh, pivots in this case, column that is equal one. to the rank of the matrix. Number of linearly independent columns. Yeah, ma'am, that is present. Uh, pivot is present on that column, so that is linear. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, number of pivots you count it row wise or column wise, it's going to be the same. Yes, ma'am. You cannot have two uh, pivots uh, when you count it row wise and three pivots when you count column wise. It's going to be the same whether you count it number along rows or columns. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, could you please explain? Uh, regarding dependent and independent variables. Yeah. So columns containing the pivots correspond to dependent variables. Because when you have a pivot, you're going to get the value of that variable from that equation. And so columns. Pivot means I'm a non-zero element, right? What does that exact that means that, uh, this, term mean? The first non-zero entry. First non-zero in row. Yeah, the leading no. Non-zero entry of each row is called a pivot. You make it one, right, by doing an elementary row operation. So, ma'am, for our sake of simplicity to calculate, uh, so we we make it one, right? Yeah. Correct. Yes. But uh, in most of the cases, uh, see reduced row echelon form, we always make it to one. So, is it compulsory or just we can put it at uh, any random number? No, for us it is compulsory. Pivots have to be one. Okay. Okay. Because if it's not one, you have to do one more operation, right? To find the value of the variable. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Say you get 2, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 4. Even from this, you can find the value of the variables, right? Correct. 
but then you have to do one extra operation for each row that's mm -hmm. we don't want that and could you uh, please give one example of, of what uh, ref and rref okay so let's yes. solve a system maybe what is gaussian yes, elimination Ma'am, uh, we use the augmented matrix. Augmented matrix. Uh, uh, it it write down the augmented matrix and uh, convert it into REF. REF is enough, right? Can you please, yes, uh, ma'am. Go back to yes. the Okay, Hello, one second. And yeah, 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 I will do that. Gauss Jordan is when you convert it into RREF. Yes, what is it out? Uh, ma'am, actually, here rank is two, as you said, key non non uh, zero rows, right? And uh, the dimension yeah. will be three, no? Or dimension will be four, or the nullity and no. What is dimension? Uh, number of rows. Uh, dimension and variables and number of rows. Video on, No, 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 no. See, please don't. Uh, please mute yourself if you're not talking to me. No. There is no dimension of a matrix. Yes, ma'am. Dimension of a vector space. Ah, you have a dimension of a vector space. What is it that you're asking? Uh, ma'am, rank dimension plus of a matrix. To, uh, rank plus nullity is equal to. Ma'am, just one request. Can uh, can you please just uh, go with this work week one and two? Otherwise, it will create confusion in others' mind, right? Yeah, yeah. It's See, rank plus point nullity point. is not equal to dimension of anything. It is equal to number of columns of the matrix. And anyway, that's not in the first four so weeks. So let's not confuse with that. Yeah. There is no dimension of a matrix. There is only rank of a matrix, which is the number of non-zero rows in REF or RREF. Fine. So yes, Gaussian okay. elimination is when you convert the coefficient matrix into REF and solve the system. So in this case, you will be doing back substitution. You will forget the value of the last variable. And then you'll go back and substitute and find the values of the other variables. Gauss Jordan is when you convert it into RREF. So in this case, you will directly get the value of all the variables. So let's take uh, a system. Ma huh. ma Gauss elimination and Gauss Jordan uh, are same. Just so one step, Jordan, one step is different, right? Or, yeah, you convert it into RREF. But both both give same answers. Yeah, you a system of equations is not going to have different answers depending on what method you choose to solve it, right? Yeah, ma'am. Uh, the doubt is uh, in Gauss elimination that is REF, so we need to do one operation for finding the uh, uh, solutions. But Gauss Jordan it is an RREF, so we directly find the solution. So that's that's the difference two methods. What is it? Ma'am, uh, so in Gauss elimination, that is in REF, and Gauss huh. Jordan, that is in RREF. So that is a one key difference yeah. between these two methods, or any other difference between these two? No, this is the only difference. Okay, okay, ma'am. Ma'am, could you please take okay. one okay. A little complicated, like where we get fraction values? Uh, uh, fraction values, that is. Take time. Well, yeah. that's a difficult See, one. The, the idea here is for me to tell you the concept, not to make you do calculations, right? I mean, that is your part. I have a question. Okay. Okay. Huh. Should it be a uh, square matrix only for the Gaussian elimination? No, let's ignore these two, no. this equation. So, OK. Now tell me, or let me add equations. That would be better. Or Uh, Ma'am, actually converting, actually finding the inverse of a matrix using that is a Gauss Jordan. No, in Gauss Jordan, using you can convert it into RREF and find the inverse of the matrix. You take the matrix and the identity matrix, we'll convert it. A to identity matrix, you will get A inverse. Okay, okay. Ma so now using Gauss Jordan, you can find the inverse. Yeah. Inverse, yeah. It's Ma'am, was in Gauss, Gauss Jordan, you are doing RREF. Okay. Ma'am, of any, any matrix. Any square, square matrix. matrix. Okay. Yeah. If it is invertible, otherwise you won't you won't be able to convert it into identity matrix at all. Yes, yes. ma'am. You will get zero rows. Yeah, you will get a zero row. Okay, let's solve this system. So first we write down the augmented matrix. That's going to be one 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 two three one minus one zero. 
2 0 minus 2 minus 2 1 minus 1 minus 1 3 can you rule out any possibility it won't have a unique solution it won't have infinitely many it won't have no solution can you rule out anything no 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 because no. the number of equations is more than the number of variables there's nothing you can tell yes ma'am so we first okay let's do gauss jordan that is convert it into rref and solve the system so what is the pivot in the first row one ma'am first, one. first one. so there is no problem once you have identified a pivot make all the entries below it zero so how are we going to make this entry zero minus r1, r2 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 minus r2 r1. To r1. yeah r2. what about this entry r2 minus r1 minus 2 r1 and this entry minus r1 r4 minus r1 minus r4 minus r1 r4 minus r1 right so that's 1 1 1 2 0 minus 2 minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4 0 minus 3 okay minus 6 okay 0 minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4 minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2 minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2 3 minus 2 is 1 so the first row is done. Go to the next row. What is the pivot in the next row? Second row? Minus, minus two. two. Minus two. two. Minus two. So you don't want it to be minus two. You can divide R2 by minus two and you'll get one, 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 two, zero, one, two, three. And then zero, minus two, minus four, minus six, zero, minus two, minus two, one. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, since row number 2 and row number 3 are same, can't mm. you not make them 0 first? Okay, you can do that as well. So, in that case, you will be making R3 is R3 minus R2. So, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, minus 2, minus 4, minus 6. Now, you can make this pivot 1, R2 by minus 2. Okay, thank you, ma'am. 0, 1, 2, 3. And shall we also swap R2, R3 and R4? By yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 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 below. Below. Yes, below. Minus 2, minus 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then pivot, pivot. Uh, Once you've identified two. the pivot, make all the entries below mm -hmm. it 0. How are we going to make this entry 0? R3 plus 2 R1. R2. 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 Yeah. R2. If you use R1, this 0 will get disturbed. So do not use R1. 1, 1, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 0. Minus 2 plus 4 is 2. 1 plus 6 is 7. 0, 0, 0, 0. So have we reached rho, rho eclon form? No, we so no, 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 Z, Man, back is Z, Z is equal to 7 by 2. Z is 7 by 2. Y plus, y plus 2 Z, Z is equal to 3. 3. So you'll get Y from there. 3 minus 7. 7. Minus 4. Yeah. X plus Y plus Z is 2. So X is Three. 2 minus 2 plus 4 minus 7 by 2. 3 and a half, 6. So that's two and a half, is it? Yeah. Uh, I have a one doubt. Ma'am, how to bring that in a reduced row echelon form? Ah, we'll do that. We'll do that. This is Gaussian elimination. If it's a Gaussian elimination, you can stop here and solve. Yes, ma'am. Ma here I have a one doubt, ma'am. So in case the fourth row, we have that augmented side, it is a zero. Suppose yeah. we have other than zero, so then it is a. How then what does it mean? That means no, no, solution. no solutions. Yeah. No solution. But so if you have some non-zero entry here, then it is no solution. 
Yes, ma'am. But uh, we have a so solutions for three variables, right? Unique solution. No, but the fourth no, no, equation no, no, no. in the system has zero uh, coefficients and uh, something. Uh, See, when no. you're trying to solve a system, uh, you're looking for one common value that fits all the equations, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so that's not going to happen if you have a non-zero value here, right? Hmm. Yes, ma'am. So it will be a problem. Okay. There won't be a solution. Ma'am? Yes. Ma'am, here in third row, we can write it at as z equal to 7 by 2. Hmm. Okay. That's what so we did, right? So I equal z equals to 7 by 2. Okay. Ah. Then we have put it to uh, the second row. the values of next. Okay, okay. So here we can pick up a property saying that if all the variables are dependent, then there will be a unique solution. This one property is to be remembered, right? No, but what if this had a non-zero entry here? Then no solution, right? Yes. Yeah. But being a non-zero here, would it tell the whole good that that will be dependent variable? What is it? Can you repeat that? You said, if there's, what if there's a non-zero value? Okay, here. say if I have three here, okay. Yeah, which means uh, the okay, three, so there's so no solution. If there's yeah, a three there, this there's is no, no solution. solution. Huh? I suppose that I suppose there's no three there. We okay. are not we are escaping out this particular probability. All I'm saying is can we say that if all the variables are dependent, then there'll be unique solution for sure. Can we remember this property? No. It will hold no. good for every and every situation. Now. No, no. See, that's what. No, if there was a three here, what would happen? All variables are dependent, and still I have no solution, right? Okay, ma'am. Uh, actually, what the if variable... this, this is the number of equations or more than number of variables, ma'am. Right? Yeah. What if this number of equations are equal to number of variables? In that case, will it? Yeah. Hold in good? that case, there will be a in unique case, solution. Yeah. Okay. If Man. there is a solution, if all variables are dependent, if there is a solution, it will be a unique solution. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Have to quickly identify the answer, which is one. Ma'am, suppose the last row is not uh, all zeros. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, you have zero zero one in the augmented. No, that's side. not possible, right? Oh, because, because then it's not in row echelon form yet. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Because you have a pivot below the pivot, everything should be zero, right? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. You yeah. cannot have yes, more yes. than three non-zero rows because you can have only three pivots, right? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm, that fourth row, the uh, element is three. Then mm -hmm. the question is asking uh, not about the solution of the uh, system of linear equation. They are asking how many independent or dependent variables are there. So for mm -hmm. the situation, I tell three dependent variables. It's that answer is right? Yeah. Okay, all okay. the three variables are dependent but it, they are dependent but they have no solution yes okay okay ma thank you ma yeah okay let's continue we'll convert it into rref and check whether we are getting the same solution one 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 two ma'am before uh, get in taking it to rref can you please uh, give an example of independent variable two okay fine yeah or maybe I'll give another example, a shorter example. Okay, ma'am, no problem, yeah. but independent. Yeah. Okay, so for RREF, whenever a column contains a pivot, I have to make uh, all the entries above the pivot also zero. So this column has a pivot, this column has a pivot, this column has a pivot. There's nothing above this in the first column, so first column is safe. Second and the third columns, you have to make the entries above the pivot zero. So let's go this way. Start from the maximum number of non-zero entries and then go that way. You can do it in any order, but this is simpler. Okay. So how will you make this entry zero? R2 minus twice of R3. R3. Use this one uh, where the pivot is there. Okay. So R R1 is R1 minus so that way we get one one zero two minus seven and a half. Writing on the screen is seven. Screen is screen Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Please present again. How about now? 
it's coming ma'am yeah no no it is fine am i writing on it yes 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 Two minus three and a half is minus one and a half. So minus three by two, and then zero, one two minus two is zero. Three minus seven is minus four. Zero zero one seven by two zero 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 zero, and then it's still not in R R E F because the second column contains a pivot. Yeah, R R one minus R two. Yeah, so we'll do R one. Is R one minus R two? That way we'll get one zero zero minus one and a half minus four. So that becomes okay plus four. So that's two and a half, is it? Yes. Yeah. So we get a unique solution, right? Yes. And this matches with the solution that we already got: five by two minus four and seven by two, right? Okay, let's take an example where we have infinitely many solutions. Say this, ma'am. Ha, huh. ma'am. Uh, in the above sum, ah, uh, the given matrix, if it is converted to REF, it is called Gauss elimination. Yeah. And if it is converted to RREF, you call it as Gauss Jordan. Yeah. Right? This also you can call it Gaussian elimination, no? Because in Gaussian elimination you have to convert it into rho echelon form. Reduced rho echelon form is also in rho echelon form, right? So nothing much difference between Gauss elimination and Gauss Jordan, right? Gauss elimination means you can stop here. Okay. Gauss Jordan means you cannot stop here. You have to go further. Okay. Okay. You so can stop here. It's not like. But what? Uh, maybe the method we are getting the solutions, no, ma'am. Yeah. No, I just so wanted to know the difference Gauss between Jordan? that. That's what the difference between Gauss Jordan and Gauss elimination. Ah, when you're trying to solve the system, this is you can stop anywhere. It doesn't matter. Ma'am, uh, while solving with Gauss elimination, where uh, we will proceed with uh, REF or RREF. REF. RREF is also in REF, right? RREF. You're just doing extra, which is not needed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, there, so the so uh, there are so many uh, ways uh, by which we are now learned to solve the equations. Ah. Which is the best way you think, ma'am, we should follow in the exam? Gauss elimination or? Uh... For me, I personally will prefer Gaussian elimination because you can whether it has solution, no, no solution, unique solution, infinitely anything, I can do it using Gaussian elimination. There is no square matrix, rectangular matrix, nothing. Oh, okay. I can oh, do anything okay. with that. And I don't want to do extra row operations, so I will stop in Gaussian elimination and do back substitution instead. Okay. okay. Ma'am, the Thank recent you. example you have given is also an example of unique solution, no? This one. Yeah, this one. No, there are only two equations. Two planes cannot intersect at exactly one point. No, right? ma'am. This recent example, like this before one. this, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. This it's is a unique it's... solution because okay. you get x, y, and z. That's it. But ma'am, I have asked you to give an example of independence. So, abhi apne wo nahi karaya na? No, that's what I'm I'm doing here. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, ma'am, just a, a small query. Mm -hmm. In this earlier uh, sum, so mm -hmm. uh, we have three independent uh, variables, right? Right. So, huh, so all three are no, independent. No, 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 not independent. Dependent. But uh, we can say at z, z is equal to seven by two. Y hmm. is equal to minus four and X is equal to. So it's not independent. No, you don't have the choice. You you cannot choose a value for Z. Z is fixed. Seven by oh. two. It's dependent. Oh. I thought uh, the Y should be in terms of X and Z. Then only. No 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 no. Dependent. It is not independent. That is why it is dependent. You are not allowed to choose any value for it. That is why it is dependent. Okay okay okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Thanks, ma'am. But the other statement also holds good, right? For the independent dependency. Which one? Uh, as you have saying that if one variable is is dependent on other two variables or three yes, variables yes. or second variable, hmm. then it is dependent, right? So yeah, both yeah. the statements will go in this case. Yeah, both are the same. Yeah. Huh. All pivots are dependent. All yeah. Whenever you have a pivot, that variable is dependent. Because you are not allowed to choose the value for that variable. 
Okay, so this system Man, is going to be. One second. Ah. With this Gauss Jordan, even uh, if it is augmented with the solution matrix, also it's we can say it is Gauss Jordan. Or for Gauss Jordan, it has to be uh, augmented with the identity matrix only. No, it's not necessary that every matrix reduces to identity matrix. Like for example, this matrix. You just have a part of the identity matrix, right? Yes, ma'am. The top is identity, but. Uh... You can also have something like this 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. This is also an RREF, right? Yeah. yeah. But this is not yes. identity matrix. Yes, ma'am. This is also an RREF. No, no. What I had in mind is ah. if it is going to be Gauss Jordan, I thought it should be augmented. Say it should be invertible matrix. No, 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 no. Like, augmented with the identity matrix oh no no that is only when you have to find the inverse okay okay when you have to find the inverse you do this okay. it's called the gauss jordan method of finding inverse because you're converting it into rref and all that right okay okay yeah. okay ma'am thank you ma'am yes ma'am this recent example that you have taken where mm -hmm. All the elements of column two are zero. Hmm. In such case, what will be the value of y? It's an independent variable, right? Because there is no pivot in that column. So we can take any value of ah, y. You can choose any value for y. How many solutions will a system having coefficient matrix like this have? Mm. Actually, I think you need. No, why unique? You're, you infinite. can choose one value infinite, of y. Yeah, I may not infinite, agree with infinite, that, right? Infinite, 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 infinite solution. Yeah. Ma'am. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, in the previous example, we can see that we cannot express one of the variables in the form of other. So how is it dependent? I think all are independent. No. 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 See, you are allowed to choose any value for y, which means that y is independent. You can choose one value and I can choose some other value, right? And both so, are going to satisfy the equation. And can you please explain it as an example? So you take the same matrix. So let's say I want to solve this system. X, Y, Z is equal to say 3, 4, 0. So what do we get from here? X is equal to three. X is equal to three. Z is equal to four. Z is equal to Y. We can take any value. Yeah. If you take Y is equal to two, that is a solution to this system. If you take Y is equal to minus two, that is also a solution to this system. Not just these values. I am allowed to choose any value for Y, and it's still going to satisfy this equation system, right? Yes. Any R, any R value, right, ma'am? Any, uh, we can take any value from R. Yeah, any, or y. Yeah, yeah, any real number. Yes. Any real number, yeah. Ma'am, so in this case, X and Z are dependent variables and Y is an independent variable. Yes. So, ma'am, ma it means that... Can we, can we say this way that if in a system, any variable, uh, any variable is independent, uh, that system has uh, infinite solution? Yes, when you have an independent variable, you any, can anyone, have infinite any one independent variable. Then uh, it has but it is also solution. possible that you have something like this, right? Yeah, no, no solution. Is no possible. solution. Yeah, yeah, that is also possible. Yeah. If there is a solution, there will be infinitely many solutions. Infinite solution. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, here y is equal to four, right? But uh, you have said something. No, 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 not y is equal to four. Z is equal to four. See, what do you get from this? The right side you have written a 3, 4, 0. Right side you have written 3, uh, 4, 0. What does it mean? That means? I am trying to solve AX is equal to B. B is 3, 4, okay. 0. Ma'am, please uh, explain okay, the okay. example of two equations again. Two equations. Ah, yeah. I haven't done that yet. I didn't understand why, uh, how yeah, can we put y two is equal to Yes, ma'am. In this case, z equal to 0 should be the solution. No. Why is it z equal to 0? What is the system reducing to? What does the first equation say? 
x plus 0 y plus 0 z is equal to 3. What does the second equation say? 0 x plus 0 y plus z is equal to 4. 0 x plus 0 y plus 0 z is equal to 0. This is what it says. Yes, ma'am. So row number. It is not equal to row number. That thing yeah, you should not write down what the system is. Yes. We got the value only x and z, and we can put yeah. y whatever we want. Yes, ma'am. Y is equal to Go by seeing column, three, not by row. Zero for b, huh? uh, it represents that there is no solution for the system of equation. Why I have given you a solution? No. 3, 2, 4. Does it solve the system? If you put 3, 2, and 4 here and multiply, will you get 3, 4, 0 as the answer? Yes, ma'am. I have given no, a solution. Yes, Why is there no solution? Okay. 0 row is not equal to 0. Then only no solution. Yeah, yeah. if you had a non-zero entry here, then there wouldn't have been a solution. Ah, okay, ma'am. Okay. So, ma'am, even though we we are we got two values, but overall system will don't have any solution, right? In case of uh, third yeah. row is non-zero. Yeah. Okay. Ma'am, one more query: If we have uh, two equations like zero x plus y plus z equal to something, and in the second equation also we have zero uh, x plus y minus z equal to something. Like basically, there are equations, and in every equation, the coefficient of one variable is Continuously zero zero zero. Ah. Then how do we? I mean, do we say that it is a system of equations with three variables, or we can ignore that variable at all and we can say that? No, it is no, no, no. It will still be a system of four variables. Suppose, yeah. see, if for the example, this case, it's still a system of three variables. You are okay. in our here group. after. Here, after reducing, uh, uh, we got these zeros. That's fine. But I'm no, saying... No, even before reducing, what if this was the equation? What if this was the yeah. system? Even then, yeah. it is in R3. Okay. okay. Madam? Yeah. We cannot Sorry. directly ignore why. Right? No. Madam, you have taken out uh, from the calculation itself. You said Z equals to 4, right? X equals yeah. to 3 and Z equals to 4. Yes. But when I see it up, you say that x equals being 3, y being 4, and z being 0. How is it? Where, where did I say that? You see, uh, from Here. the bottom, where, when you were solving the equation, you said x equals to 3. Yeah. z equals to 4, right? Right. And what is y? y is independent. I cannot get the value of y from this because all the equations don't ah. contain y, so there is Any no way I can determine that. the value of okay. y. Okay, so but when you written here the a x equals to b right? Mm -hmm. I see it here three four zero. Yeah, this is the right hand vector. This is not the solution. Ma'am, sab log actually corresponding value samaj rahe hain. Jaise x ke samne three likha hai, y ke samne four likha hai, to sabko lag raha hai ki y is equals to four ho raha hai. No, I am trying to solve a x is equal to b, where b is three four zero. Not x is 3, y is 4, and z is 0. It is okay. better to write down the equation. Then it will matter. I have written down the equations here. I am trying to solve this system. So, what will the final conclusion? Would it hold? Um, will have any solution or not? It has a solution. No? Infinitely many, 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 many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. Okay, yeah. Because, because y, y is, is an independent variable. There is yes, no yes. pivot corresponding to the column of y. The solution set is 3, comma y, comma 4. Yeah, 3, comma k, comma 4, where k can take any value. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, I have a matrix multiplication doubt. Huh? Uh, if we uh, write down this expression, can you explain? Which expression? Uh, I, I will speak out. Okay. Uh, C A X okay. is equal to A V. Okay. Now can we cancel out here A and A matrix? No, how can you cancel out matrices? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, solve this system. This has been lying for a long time now. One, 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 one minus one. 1, 0. 
can it have a unique solution no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am no you have three variables and two equations only so you cannot have a unique solution definitely let me reduce this r2 is r2 minus r1 so 1 1 1 1 0 -1 is -1 is -2 1 -1 is 0 0 minus Ma'am, so uh, one second, ma'am. If uh, if it is uh, equations are more than the unknowns or the uh, the other way, you will mm -hmm. not have unique solutions, right? No, no. The other case, you cannot tell anything. This is the only case where you can rule out unique solution. Oh, okay. If the number of equations is more, you cannot tell anything. You can have all the three possibilities. Oh, yeah. oh thank you. Yeah. So this is in REF. Okay, let's do RREF. R one will be R one minus R two. So that's 1, 0, 1, yeah. 1 minus half is half, 0, one, zero half. 1, 0, half. We have to so, apply on that column only, which is independent variables. Ah, so here you have an independent variable, right? Mm -hmm. That is third, third variable. Yeah, so mm -hmm. Z is independent, mm -hmm. X is half minus half. Z, but Y is directly half. It's uh, not dependent on Z, function. but in you don't have the choice for Y. It is half. Yes, ma'am. So the solution is going to be half minus Z. How K. it is independent variable? Because you can choose any value for Z and it's going to satisfy this equation, right? Actually, uh, it is a little bit confusing. What I do, uh, by definition, I learned that all pivots are independent and everything. All pivots are dependent. 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 All pivot dependent. Whenever you see pivot, you say dependent. Hmm. Everything else is there. In, uh, independent. independent. And here is also, uh, there is every every column contains a pivot. So, the, no. the third, third oh, column does not have any pivot. Yeah, no, third column does not have any pivot. So, that is a third. The first non-zero entry of each row is pivot. This is not the first non-zero entry of the row. This is the first non-zero entry. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Ma'am, can we continue the previous example too? Just, Which one? Just one. Uh, yeah, this one. Okay, okay, done. That's totally fine. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Ma'am, can we conclude that if we have an independent variable, then we will have infinite solutions? If we have a solution. If we have a solution, it's going to be infinite. It can also be this case, right? So, ma'am, it will be infinitely many solutions if uh, one is independent. Here, see, you, two of the variables are independent, right? Yes, yes. No, yeah. but no solution. No solution. But no solution, no. right? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So if but there if, is a solution, it will have infinitely many solutions. If we will have zero at the place of two, then it will be infinite many. Ah, yes. Okay. So, ma'am, in above equation, Z is independent variable because there is no any mapping variable in right hand column, right? Z is independent because I have only two equations, and with two equations, I cannot find the value of three variables. Three three variables okay so that's where third variable uh, so is independent uh, so we always take z as a third variable or is it's on uh, it's on us no it will depend on the question so how you write down the matrix no see if you are choosing to write it as z plus x plus y is equal to 1 then your third variable is going to be y, y. if that's how you're going to write it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay yeah okay so any Ma is there anything that we didn't uh, cover in weeks one and two? Grammar uh, rule. Grammar rule we discussed. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, ma what is the uh, uh, system of weeks? In, in this problem that we important. just solved, we said Z is uh, independent. Even huh. X can be independent, right? And no. you could write X, Z, X as a. Yeah, but we a... choose, yes, but we choose the variable corresponding to pivot as dependent. Okay, because this could have been two, right? Yeah. So in that case, you if you choose z to be dependent, then you will get two z is equal to half minus x. So you have to do one more operation, no? One by two times one. No, no, I understand two. that. I'm just saying, but technically. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Either it's more of for them. Conven convenience yeah, that but we are for choosing. convenience, we choose the one containing the pivot as okay. independent. I think it is a uh, combination in linear algebra. Huh? 
it is Sorry? convention in linear algebra to choose the pivot so yeah because that is question, more convenient if there is a question where they specifically ask how many dependent variables are there in this how many that's that always fixed irrespective of whether you choose z or x how many is right. always fixed which one okay. that is the thing so in this case you have one independent and two dependent variables two dependent and one independent right yeah ma'am yes uh, if there are more equations than variables then we have unique solution no not necessarily x plus y is equal to 1 x plus y is equal to 1 x plus y is equal to 1 You have three equations and two variables. How many solutions? Infinite. Infinitely many. And now? No solution. No, no solution. solution. So it, anything is possible, right? Yes. Now? Unique, Unique solution. solution. So anything is possible. Miss, uh, could you explain that? No. See, if you have three lines, the three lines can intersect. At exactly one point, right? In yes. which case you will have a unique solution. Yes. Or it can be like this. In which case, what is it? No single intersection. No, no, no solution, single, right? No solution. Yeah, no single intersection point. Yeah. The in fact, these three lines don't intersect at one point, right? So it's not going to have a solution at all. and it could also be like this right like two equations are this then it's a unique solution what if the third equation is also this then there are infinitely many solutions right yes so anything is possible okay it all depends on the equations you cannot guess anything Ma'am, will it be possible that more professors' lecture is also present in lecture because professor has explained the lecture in a uh, little ex uh, abstract way? Okay, so. Uh, I mean, so what is the? Ma'am, can you please give lectures instead? No, we are not. We are definitely not qualified for that. Ma'am, because of lectures, we cannot understand anything, ma'am. Even after listening four or five times, I am not able to get any concept. Ultimately, then maybe you should watch the live YouTube. session and then go back. Then you will Madam, understand it better. That's why we are doing. If you feel that is Madam, out of context, question, Madam. Hmm. A week five practice assignment date is on Sunday. Yeah, we, it, we... we it has already been extended. I guess. Uh, no, it's Tuesday. 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 I checked today. It's yeah. on twenty eighth, sir. And, ma'am, so, regarding uh, Python also. Uh, so in Python, we have weekly uh, mock. Okay. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. So can we ask that in forum that can it be extended? Because ah, that that, that you can ask them. Okay. So tomorrow we have one Python uh, means a revision session. So can we request them right to yeah, extend yeah. that deadline? Yeah. Yes. Ah, okay, yes. Okay. Ma'am. Ah. Yes. What is it? मैम मैम एक क्विक रिकैप मैम आपने बताया ना नंबर ऑफ इक्वेशन अगर नंबर ऑफ वेरिएबल से कम होगी तो नो सॉल्यूशन और नंबर ऑफ इक्वेशन अगर नंबर नंबर ऑफ इक्वेशंस से नंबर ऑफ वेरिएबल्स कम है तो डेफिनेटली नॉट यूनिक सॉल्यूशन दैट्स द ओनली थिंग यू कैन से यू कैन नॉट से वेदर इट इज नो सॉल्यूशन और यूनिक सॉल्यूशन इनफिनिटली मेनी सॉल्यूशंस मैम वन स्मॉल रिक्वेस्ट मैम सो Don't go with Hindi, ma'am, because uh, he a lot of people. No, no. Uh, See, uh, I have been explaining uh, in English only because his doubt was in Hindi. Yeah, that doubt we cannot understand that doubt. So people we are asking. Translate. That is totally fine for. Us. So the question was, if the number of equations is less than the number of variables, can we tell that it is a no solution case? Okay. Okay. Ma'am. It is ma not. Can we cover week three and week four, please? Week four, I think, is impossible, but we we'll uh, do a little. At least, week. at least week. Yeah. Okay. Ma'am, could you what please clear what is the weighted, uh, weighted week wise? Means the week Everything one. Everything is equally important. And when is grammar so really important, or we could avoid that? Uh, avoid that. Mm -hmm. No. See, uh, 
I, I won't say you should avoid it or not avoid it because there may be a question saying using Kramer's rule, if this is what you get, then find out what is this, like something like that, right? Like the XI. But if you just ask to solve a system of linear equations, then you can avoid Kramer's rule because you have other ways of solving it. Okay, ma'am. And ma'am, like one thing regarding uh, uh, the, uh, the question, uh, comprehension question, uh, genotype question, I have asked in uh, TA group also, but they, they have not replied uh, clearly. Uh, will you take at the end? What, what question? Comprehension type one question. I think everyone will have doubt in that question. No, have you checked the idea. solution that has been uploaded? Yes, ma'am, I have checked, but I do not understand that how to approach that. It is difficult that uh, what is generation and how to uh, and uh, how the generation propagate. Okay, uh, we will discuss it at the end. We will first finish this, ma'am. Yes, ma practice are also graded. What is graded? Practice assignments. No, that's that, for bonus that marks. Which are given deadlines? The one we have on Sunday. Yeah, that's for bonus marks. They are for bonus marks. Yeah. Okay. Which one? When there is separate, uh, there is uh, practice assignment uh, uh, deadline is uh, week wise or for uh, till uh, uh, Tuesday? Week wise. Week wise. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, as you say that if the question is say that if we want to solve using grammar school, mm -hmm. uh, so what I, I think like uh, whatever method we choose, but the solution to that equation will remain same, not values. Yes. But, so it doesn't. Um, like no, see, uh, yeah, if you're asked, even if you said, so using Kramer's rule, find x1 or find x2 or something, you can use other methods and find it. We are not going to know which method you've used. But uh, I'm just sorry. telling you, maybe if there is an intermediate step that comes only through Kramer's rule or something like that. But the solutions will remain the same for Yeah, the solutions were, uh, will always be the same irrespective of what method you choose. Thank you. Ma'am? Yes. How do you find the sum of diagonal elements of a to the power of five matrix? No, that particular example, whatever you're asking, I guess, uh, follows a pattern in powers. That is why it's easy to find. Otherwise, you cannot. You have to find out a power phi and then find the sum of diagonal entries. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So, what is a homogeneous system of equations? x equal to 0 man. yeah the right hand vector is 0 so this always has a solution right yes ma'am yes. so there are only two cases it's either a unique solution or there are infinitely unique many unique. solutions if it is a unique solution what is that solution zero ma'am zero ma yeah. yeah zero x is equal to 0 is the solution if there are infinitely many solutions then definitely there is at least one x not equal to 0 which will be a solution fine so if yes. the coefficient matrix is a square matrix, then you can find the determinant and check which one of it is satisfied, right? Yes. So if determinant is not equal to 0, it will be unique solution. If determinant is equal to 0, it is infinitely many solution. Fine. So this is something special for homogeneous equations. And ma'am, for non-homogeneous? For non-homogeneous, determinant equal not equal to 0 implies unique solution. This is always true. But determinant equal to 0 may be infinitely many or no solution. Okay, okay. It can be any one of the cases. But in homogeneous, you don't have this condition, right? No solution. Yes, this is never possible. That is why you can discriminate this or this. Differentiate, yeah. Okay, so let's quickly do some vector space. What is a vector space? B is a set along with binary operations, addition and scalar multiplication satisfy several conditions. Yeah, so a set along with two operations. So depending on the operation, a set may be a vector space or may not be a vector space. The same set may behave differently depending on what the operations are. So it should satisfy, we have a list of 10 conditions. The first one is closure with respect to addition. You pick any two elements from the set. You add them. It should belong to the set. And then you have 
any real number and any vector that belongs to this set, you multiply these two. That is, you do scalar multiplication, it should belong to this set. This is closure properties. Closure with respect to addition and closure with respect to scalar multiplication. With respect to addition, from your screen is stuck, ma'am. Again, is it? No, it's okay. Yeah, now it's visible, ma'am. Ah, okay. Now, am I writing now? Yeah, 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 ma'am. Ah, okay. Ma'am, your closure means it defined within that range, right? Uh, closure means. You needn't look for something outside the set. It's already ah, there okay, inside okay. the set. Closed under addition, right? Yeah. Closed under addition, closed under multiplication. Scalar multiplication. You ah, don't scalar. know how to multiply vectors, right? So. Yeah, but it's scalar, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have four conditions with respect to addition. One is associativity. Um, so you have three vectors. You can add any two first, and I'm then add it with it. Madam, huh? your, screen is, your screen is lagging. Again, screen is stuck, madam. Okay, is there a lag or is it stuck? Stuck. Yes, ma'am. Ma right now we can see only V1 plus V2 plus. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ha, now now we got. Oh, okay. So this is associativity. And then what? There should be. Huh? Commutative, ma'am. Ah, yeah, commutativity is there. Commutativity is you have two vectors, we you can add them in any order. There is a there exists an additive identity zero. Yeah, there exists an additive identity zero. that acts like this. Yes. You add any vector to that, you get back the same vector. And then there is an additive inverse. 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 Yeah. Which will nullify the effect of the vector. So whatever V is. This just when you add it with W, you're going to get the additive identity, not necessarily the zero, whatever the zero is. Uh, means whatever is the zero of the vector space, that is the zero, not necessarily the number zero. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, so sixth one four. is associative property, right? This is associativity. Sixth one, Achha, third one. Ah, this is commutativity. Okay. We can write down in. Uh, we can uh, uh, different order, right? Yeah, you can add vector two vectors in any order you want. You needn't follow a particular order. Ma'am, why associativity is important? We have not get any question where uh, equation is failing associativity. Ah, uh, that's because most of our examples are in R three and all that, right? So there, it all follows this, right? Means commutative check is enough to say that uh, associativity will follow or not. No, 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 no. There, there is no relation between commutativity and associativity. No, in associativity, you're not changing the order of the vectors. You're just adding them in different. Uh, what? Uh, you're adding them at different in different ways. Not you're not changing the order of the vectors. Can we get any uh, uh, question that uh, uh, follow everything but not associative? Uh, that's a little difficult to construct right now. Uh, maybe if I think of something, I'll put it on the forum. Ma'am, may I say Ma can you please explain? You know, V1 plus V2, if you take it as some V4, mm. and then V1 here, the sixth one, uh, commutative, V1 plus uh, V4 will be equal to V4 plus V1, no, madam? So, uh, again, V1 plus V2 can be either V1 plus V2 or V2 plus V1. Right. So, so in the commutative, the order is also changed, and in associative order, it is uh, satisfying the condition. Uh, what is it? Uh, okay. Uh, so, no, I am just uh, uh, in line with the other person who was telling. No, commutative or associative, whether both are same or not. Uh, are not you saying, saying it is the same? same? Means I am saying that checking commutative is enough. Means we, I, I am not, I have never checked associative. But sometimes it fails. Ah. That's it, what it never fails in any question, question. In all I have solved. No. Ah, at least uh, in all our questions, question, it hasn't failed. There will have marriage. Uh, ah. Ma'am, this additive identity will be unique for a particular vector space. Right? Yes, yes. If it if it exists, then it is unique. Okay. Can yeah, you please explain point number five, man? 
point number five is existence of additive inverse. So there is an element with which when you add, it means for every V, there is an element W with which when you add, you get the zero. Whatever is the zero of the... It means W is equal to minus V. Yeah, minus V in the sense, not the usual minus V. A scalar multiplication of minus one. No, so, it depends on what the set is, right? You cannot always say it is minus V. Okay. Ah. Okay, madam. Sometimes zero is also not exactly zero, zero, zero. Sometimes zero. zero. Ah, yeah, it zero is not. Vector. Oh, for associativity, I, I, so, I mean, my mind was behind associativity. I got an example. What if I had to uh, say subtract? Uh, my operation is subtraction. Then say two minus three minus four. Uh, will it be equal to uh, two will be, uh, no, yes. uh, minus three minus. minus four? No, right? No, ma'am. It will be plus, no? Three plus. No, four. no. My. Huh? Achha, achha, okay, associativity is not. No, no, no. It Haan, will not be associativity is not satisfied for this operation. I'm telling. So for subtraction, you are saying. Ah. Okay. So this is one operation which does not satisfy associativity, I'm telling. Mm -hmm. one, so madam, one doubt in that. Uh, Here, 2 minus 3 is same as 2 plus minus 3, isn't it, ma'am? Yes. So in that case, uh, that plus, uh, that minus 3 will go inside this, uh, minus 3, minus 4, it will become. You are Where? just taking in uh, 2 minus 3 is basically 2 plus minus 3, and then uh. within brackets, minus 4. Uh -huh. equal to 2 uh, plus plus bracket. minus 3 minus 4. No, uh, actually I have a doubt because you have a bracket. No. This is on the yeah. first group. So you plus two two minus seven two is coming five and five, no, madam. May no, no. no. Yeah. You are not doing associativity here. You are not doing it right, no? So if that's the way, you have to write it like this. Yeah, yeah. Your binary operation isn't defined correctly. Ah, so I am defining sum of two numbers as their difference. Like A plus B is A minus B. That's how I'm defining. This is my new plus. This okay. plus is defined as you subtract those two numbers, right? What I'm checking associativity for here? this. So, ma'am, here we cannot give the mixed sign also, right? Miss 2 plus 3 minus 4, like that. Everything should be the plus sign. It will be this plus. Uh -huh. Yes. So, that's what. Yeah. What is that going to do? It's going to subtract the two numbers, right? Correct. So, we cannot write like that, right? 2 plus 3 in bracket plus 4. Uh, sorry, minus 4. And just... Uh, ah, uh, you cannot change the order of your operations. Okay, okay, okay. So only the mix, only associate. Yeah. Okay. So ma'am, uh, one thing re uh, related to this R2, R3. So mm -hmm. can we consider it, a, it on a, a plane? Means R2 means a 2D plane and R3 means 3D plane? R2... Ah, yeah, it is the two-dimensional plane, no? Two-dimensional plane, RT. So there will be always a two variable X and Y. Yes. And R3 means uh, three. You have three components. Three components. Okay. Ma'am. Yes. Uh, can you explain the question eight in mock for quiz one regarding the vector spaces? No, I will, but let me finish the definition of a vector space. No, okay. Here I have before that, please take the ah. unit type question. You are writing the earlier. You're writing that way, and one of the person is telling like uh, uh, he's converted that subtraction into uh, plus times minus. So that is also fine, but uh, the parenthesis gives the important, and that, that is a board must rule. That that means that bracket must be solved. Then you go to the next element. We cannot break into yeah. it. So yeah, yeah, man. So that is that is main idea. Ah uh, yes, the order in which we add. In yes. the sense that which one gets added first matters. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, ma'am, here we are. We 
on negative sign we can convert it to plus minus sign but this uh, rule is not uh, satisfying correct which rule, uh, rule means bodmas rule right uh, means suppose in last example 2 minus 3 we can written write it like 2 plus in bracket minus 3 this thing and okay. suppose that 2 uh, minus 3 in bracket ah uh. right so uh, no 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 uh, just in first example 2 minus 3 in one bracket and there, there is a minus 4 at uh, outside bracket right ah uh, yeah ha uh, so uh, if we want to convert it to uh, plus okay so but we mm -hmm. cannot give we have to give to separate bracket for 3 right <laughs> to make it negative okay Ma correct yes then so that's uh, so here that that our rule is uh, uh, that bod bodmas rule is not satisfying actually what i am telling is 2 minus 3 you can able to convert into 2 plus, plus of minus 3 right? correct yeah, without that we cannot define it right i mean we but, cannot but, define but, 2 plus minus 3 no actually the main bracket is still there right so it is enclosed 3, 2 plus uh, minus 3 uh, 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 right? i told one. that bracket. now i think uh, this example is wrong ma'am uh, integers are associative No, integers. No, are... it depends. No. See, what do you mean by associativity? Associativity is not about a set; it's about an operation. Yeah. Subtraction is not associative. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Subtraction is not associative. It's not commutative too. Not commutative too, also. Yeah, it's not commutative as well. Okay, I guess let's proceed. Uh, the other conditions are one into v, that one from the set of all real numbers. you multiply uh, one with any vector you should get back the same vector and then you do scalar multiplication ma'am in eighth seventh property so oh. zero vector is uh, it's not zero so but uh, one is one right yeah this is the one from r okay 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 ma'am yeah scalar multiplication here you're oh. doing scalar multiplication yes this is from the vector space okay okay ma'am So, ma'am, uh, suppose other axioms are not satisfying, this seventh one will always always be satisfying, right? Yeah. Even though, right? So we cannot, uh, we can uh, means uh, we cannot say that like ignore, but it is one of the axiom, right? No. See, if you're going to define your uh, scalar yeah, multiplication, ma something ma like this. Ma'am, if the multiplication is defined differently, then we cannot satisfy ah. one dot v, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like this. Say, for example, you do this. Then one times x comma y is going to give you x comma zero. You choose any non-zero y; it's not going to be satisfied, yes, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And then the last two are the distributive properties. Distribution, compatibility of addition and scalar multiplication. And uh, the But other one is last example. Can you just explain that one, ma'am? Uh, Which C, one? E, x, y, C x y is equal to x one x comma zero. If that I define see. scalar multiplication like this, yes. then one into v is not going to be equal to v always, right? The one, one into one comma one is going to give you one comma zero, right? It's too much. It is not giving. It's not so giving one comma one. Okay. One into v. Ma'am, there is no requirement. There is no requirement for zero into v is equal to zero, right? No, ma'am. Ma'am, why is that? Uh, why is when we are multiplying one uh, comma one by one, we are getting one comma zero? That's because I have so, defined I... scalar multiplication like this. C times okay. x comma y is defined as okay. Let me put C x here. C x comma zero. Okay. If this is how scalar multiplication is defined. Then one into one comma one is going to give me one comma zero. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I think what what's happening is in many of the questions, uh, if I, could, I, mean, I got to know about it a little later. Essentially, the operators themselves have been redefined in the question. Yeah, and if I it's the usual addition and usual scalar multiplication, then uh, most of it is yeah. So they've actually been redefined and they've been given a specific definition. And the question asked is: given those definition, uh, you have to verify all the these conditions. Yeah. but thank you uh, ma'am i have one question yeah. uh, in a, in a vector space when we want to find the 0 0 vector 
so we should only see the vector right not the operation not the uh, addition or the uh, multiplication uh, scalar no, multiplication no. No. see you're telling that there is a zero which acts like this so it depends on the addition right it depends yes. on how you add the two vectors what is that vector with which you add any vector you get back the same vector same vector Okay, okay. Ma'am, but for subspace checking, we check the direct 0, 0 vector only, right? No, no, there also it is the 0 of the vector space, not yes. the usual 0. Okay, not the uh, 0, 0, 0, that vector, no. origin. No. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, like 0 vector, the 1 is also unique for a vector space, right? This is not from the vector space. This is the number 1. No. Oh, okay, okay. It's uh, just the number. This one. is our usual one. It's just a not, scalar. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. This okay. is the one that says 1 into 2 is equal to 2. 1 into 3 is equal That one. Mm, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, someone asked mock. Let's look for that. Ma'am, on Friday, can we start a uh, little early or uh, just to, to give the importance for linear dependent and linear independent? Last little question. early in the sense uh, that how to uh, means there are lots of question and there is a confusion also. They you write uh, if you are ready to stay till eleven. Also, uh, how 11, to find... 12, However long you want, we can stay. Okay. You're okay, madam. Yeah. Even today we can stay up to however long you want. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, ma'am, I have a doubt. Help us, help us uh, with some uh, examples where, because I am personally finding so much of uh, issues while uh, answering this vector. Mm. Please, questions from me. We, uh, we just doubt. talk with subspaces today. That's because too much of learning on one day is also not going to help, right? Ma'am, uh, uh, regarding the dimension of vector space, I have a doubt. Uh, can I ask, ma'am? Is it uh, week till week four? Yeah. What is it out? See, in activity 4.3, uh, there is a question uh, which asks you to find the dimension of the vector space V uh, is equal to hmm. a uh, set of A belonging to M uh, matrix uh, 3 cross hmm. 3, where hmm. A is equal to A transpose, hmm. for which I got the dimension as 6. Mm. And the uh, next question is uh, the same wherein A is equal to minus A transpose. Mm. Uh, for that also, I thought uh, uh, the dimension is 6, but the answer is... No, what will happen to the diagonal entries if A is equal to minus A zero, transpose? Zero, 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 because that is Q symmetry. Can I explain them? Yeah. They will be 0. Yeah, A i j equal to uh, minus A i j. Uh, that is a transpose. So, A j i. So, a i j plus a j i equal to zero. So the diagonal entries must be zero in skew symmetric matrix. So that's why you are getting the dimension is three. Oh, okay. Because okay, only okay. Three. When you have a skew symmetric matrix, the diagonal entries should be zero, right? Can you please explain? Uh, can you please uh, explain with an example, ma'am? Yeah, here I've written down. No, see, this is a. But we are not able to see the. Screen. Yeah, screen yeah. Okay, yeah. writing is having yeah, issues. Yeah, right. oh, yeah, fine. Right now, fine. Ah, yes, ma'am. Now we are able to see. Ah, okay. So what uh, A should be equal to minus A transpose, right? Yes. So if this is A, then this is minus A transpose, right? Yes. Yeah. So A should be equal to minus A. When is that possible? A should be equal to minus A. So 2 times A should be equal to 0. zero. So A is equal to zero. 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 Similarly, D will also become zero, right? Zero. Oh, mm. yeah. Okay. So okay, you okay. actually you're getting rid of those two, and then yeah. this should be minus of this. So done. Yeah. You just need one Means, element. Ma'am, all okay. diagonal entry will be zero, right? All all diagonal entry. Yes, if it is a skew symmetric matrix, all diagonal entries should be zero. Okay. Mom, can you please explain it one more time, please? Yeah. So have. Uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I to be equal to minus of the transpose, right? Yes, ma'am. So these two yeah. matrices should be equal. When are two matrices equal? The respective entries when are equal. The corresponding entries are equal. Are equal, yes, ma'am. 
So this entry should be equal to this entry of the matrix. That is minus A, minus B, minus G, minus B, minus E, minus H, minus C, minus F, minus I. Right? So this A should be equal to minus A. When is that possible? Mom, we, when we will multiply A equal to minus A. A is equal to minus A. So what can you tell us? Zero. Zero. Huh. Two times A is zero, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So A has to be zero, right? If A should be equal to minus A. Yes, ma'am. Similarly, E should be zero. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Similarly, I should be zero. Yes, ma'am. And B should be equal to minus D. Yes, ma'am. And Your this condition also says B should be equal to minus D. But then the screen is freezed. Yes, ma'am. Is it frozen? Ma'am, uh, now it's fine. Ah. So, can I replace? Now what? I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So, A has become 0. E has become 0. I has become 0. I know B has to be equal to minus D. So, I can replace D with minus B, right? Yes, ma'am. Similarly, if I have a C here, I should have a minus C here, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And then F here minus F. So yes, how much information is needed now? Three. Three. One, I two, three. Once you know this portion, you know the entire matrix. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. So ma what was it? Yes, ma'am. Making now doubt only. One no. Minute. Ah. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, so here we are talking about skew symmetric matrix and uh, previous one is schema symmetry A equal to A transpose. So my doubt is um, in exam, the question is asking like uh, the types of matrices. Uh, like uh, if A is a matrix from three by three and A is symmetry or A is skew hmm. symmetry. So hmm. for that one, I need to study the types of matrices. Or this is- No, we'll symmetry. give you what A symmetric matrices a is equal to a transpose we'll get that yeah but they didn't give that name what no if we are mentioning a symmetric matrix we will also give you a is equal to a transpose okay 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 see that symmetric is. and skew symmetric are basic things right yeah. if it is yeah. hermitian and and go like that mean it is really hard no we are not hermitian is not even there in the syllabus no you don't yeah. have c complex numbers yes ma'am Okay, okay. Ma'am? Ma yes. How will we determine the dimension if instead of saying that uh, A is equal to A transpose, mm -hmm. we are given some equations like ABC is equal to something and uh, twice of D is something and something. Mm -hmm. In that question, how, will, are, how are we supposed to find the dimensions? Is this okay? Yes, ma'am. Exactly like this. Ah. So, is there anything that you can do to get rid of A? No. Nothing. Is there anything you can do to get rid of B? Yes, ma'am. Right? But once I do this, can I get rid of C? Uh -huh. no. no. No, no, no. B? No. no. I can get rid of only one of these three, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and ma I have got rid of B. So, now... Uh, a, B, C can be anything. If I know this A, do I know the entire matrix? Ma'am, A, C, D it is. A, C, D, not A, B, C. Okay. If I know C, do I know the entire matrix? No. no. So A is needed, C is needed. If I know D, D do I know the entire matrix? No, ma'am. No. But if I know all the three, then do I know the entire matrix? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Is yes. this fourth entry necessary? No, ma'am. No. So, how much information is needed to know the entire matrix? You need three. 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 three so no, that is the dimension. Dimension. And what will be the basis of this? Using this. So, whenever you need an information, you will get an entry corresponding to that. So, you need A. Once you know A, what and all do you know in the matrix? Nothing. Nothing. Right? So if A is 1, you don't know anything else about the others, right? So yes. that's corresponding to the information A. If you know C, what and all do you know? 
minus half at b. Ah. What about this entry? Zero. That's it. So this is another basis element. What is the last information that you need? D. If you know this, what do you know? Minus uh, half at b. This is the basis. And this so you is need three information. Uh, so corresponding to set. each information, yeah, corresponding to each information, you will have one entry, okay. Okay. one vector. And ma'am, no? there are few questions where uh, a, a set is given and we have to we are asked the span of it. Hmm. And how are we supposed to find that span? One second. Someone was asking a doubt in this question. What was that? Ma'am, your screen is not visible. No, visible. No, it is. Visible. It's visible. It's yeah. visible. Scroll it little up, madam. Okay. No, no, no. I'm saying otherwise. Ah. Scroll it down. Yeah. Ah. Ma'am. Huh. When is the next revision session? Friday. Friday, eight o'clock. In that, what you will be discussing? We will continue from here. Will we discuss vector space? Mm. Quick revision of vector space and then linear independence. Ma'am, in, ma in the concept of vector spaces, we are saying dimension is equal to rank, right? No, 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 no. Dimension for a vector space, rank for a matrix. Yes, ma'am. Ma uh, rank one. for the matrix. Uh, okay, we don't call it as dimension of matrix. We only call no. it as rank of matrix. Yeah. And the rank of matrix, what we are calling here is different from the rank what we uh, saw earlier, like number of non-zero rows, right? No, Both it's the same. same actually. It's the, the number same. of non-zero rows is the rank. Okay. So, mad, uh, madam, uh, mm -hmm. regarding... Uh, dimension of vector space and rank of matrix so what i have understood so can i uh, explain it in one minute if i am wrong please uh, correct me so this is there is no relationship between the two okay go ahead yeah. what what did you understand so so uh, let's say there is a vector space of three vector mm -hmm. so if I want to know the uh, dimension of the vector space, so I will uh, arrange these three vectors in a row. So I will get a matrix. Then mm -hmm. I do the row e e equivalent form uh, uh, to get the non-zero rows. So the number of non-zero rows is the uh, dimension of the vector space. At the same time, the, the uh, matrix what I made from these three vectors, uh, three vector, if I start from there, the number of non-zero rows should be the uh, rank for this matrix, the particular matrix that I have formed uh, while formation the uh, vector. Uh, mm, this is, you're talking about linear independence. Yeah. Mm. So you're starting with a spanning set and you're trying to check whether it is linearly independent. That is why this dimension thing is coming to picture. Yeah. So oh, just like that, you cannot find, uh, you cannot start with any three vectors and talk about dimension. You're taking a spanning set. That is why this is happening. Yes, ma'am. Right, right. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, I am facing problem related to addition and scalar multiplication in vector spaces. Hmm. Like okay. uh, someone had asked, no, mock, we'll do that question. That, this question. Ma'am, that genotype question. Ah, okay. So, uh, what is this? Yeah. Uh, V1 is usual addition, right? A1 is added with A2. Can you see my screen? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma Why oh, am I not presenting the entire window? Now, can you see? Yeah. Yes. Ah. So this is V1. V1 has addition, usual addition, right? Yes, ma'am. A1 plus A2 component wise addition, B1 plus B2, the second component, right? The scalar multiplication is what is different. So the scalar gets multiplied only with the first component. 
Will this be a vector space? No. No, no. no. Why not? One which is not equal to v. Ah, yeah. We can take that, right? One and two. Uh, one two. A comma b. Oh, one but that will work, right? That will work. Yeah. One into a comma b is going to be one into a comma b. That is going to work, right? Yeah. What All else will not will work? work? All is scalar will work, but no, 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 no. Scalar no. multiplication yeah. will have a problem. In addition, we have problem. No, means the scalar multiplication will not have problem. Addition is normal. Addition is more than a usual point. addition. Yeah, it's so zero vector is also there, and inverse we can also find. So, so. Addition is zero, no zero into zero into the vector will. Ma'am, the work. tenth property will fail. Distributivity will have an issue. When you mix addition and scalar multiplication, then there'll be an issue. So what alpha into a comma b plus c comma d? What will you get? Alpha into a plus c comma b plus d. So this is going to be alpha into a plus c comma b plus d, right? That's how scalar multiplication is defined, right? Yes, ma'am. So this is going to be alpha a, uh, alpha a comma b plus alpha c comma d. Oh, that also works, right? Yeah. That also. Then it will not work when a plus b into v the distributive over scalar multiplication. Ah, the other one, yeah, alpha c comma d. So this also works. This is what alpha into a comma b plus alpha into c comma d. This works. The other one will have a problem. Alpha plus beta into a comma b. What is this? Alpha plus beta into a into a comma b. Oh, this also seems to work. Alpha mm -hmm. a plus beta a comma b. Alpha a comma b plus beta a comma b this also works right addition no problem so that's going to be fine of the other four conditions we have checked three conditions let's check the other one alpha beta into a comma b this also should work right yes alpha beta into a comma b so this is alpha into beta a comma b this is alpha into beta a comma b. so it is a vector space ma'am i think one property it will not satisfy it will not work when alpha plus beta into a comma b if we do something wrong ma'am alpha uh, plus beta into a comma b is this ma'am alpha plus beta right what is the question i'm sorry i missed it could you could you show that question and one yeah. thing? This uh, is v, one. You, are, you are doing v2 or v1, ma'am? V1, v1. The mistake is that b1 plus b2 is here in the it third step. B. It has to be 2b. 2b. It will become 2b. Where? The third step. Here the oh, addition here. is in alpha addition, a it will become 2b. Alpha, b. alpha a plus a beta a. Plus two B. It should be two B. Yes, get the oh yeah 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 sorry 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 yeah right 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 okay this is equal to this but these two are not equal right so it's not a vector space right yes ma'am. So this is not equal to alpha times a comma b plus beta times a comma b. Ma'am, one question I have asked previously, and I, I want to ask it again. Uh -huh. uh, regard, I mean, it is not in axiom. There are eight axioms. Mm -hmm. I want to say, I mean, is it valid to check that the null vector and the negative v? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, sorry. The null vector and b mm. plus negative b must mm. be null. Mm. 
and both null vector must be same uh, the checking this property oh, what is the second null vector no miss i am i am saying that uh, we have to take a first uh, we have to first i will build first null vector uh, i will find first null vector so as that okay. v plus null vector is equal to v okay <clears throat> then i will calculate v and minus v using the uh, i will calculate v and minus v uh, I will calculate ad addition of v and minus v, uh, and I will multiply minus v as a multiplication. Minus one into v, okay. Uh, as it will be told in question, not uh, usual. It may be uh, usual or it may not be usual. Uh, and I will check whether this evaluate to null vector or not. Okay. And if in both cases null vector come out to be same. Mm. Then it is okay, uh, and if it is not, then I will certainly say that it is not vector space. Means I am not saying whether uh, if they are same. No, 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 no. This is like, uh, see, this is something like uh, you are going backwards. You are finding yeah, a vector. I am going backwards, but I am I am saying that if this fail, it I am I am very sure that it could it could never be vector space. This is little bit tricky. Means you could say that it is a trick way. Means in this question, I could show this uh, very easily. This this property. And we could say that even in not vector space. Yeah, he's trying to tell. I think uh, uh, we have a only unique vectors, uh, unique zero vector in the vector space. But what he's telling uh, that zero vector and uh, he get adding to that additive inverse, he will get another zero, another vector. So. That is not unique. Then it is not a vector space. No, but that's not how it works, right? Yeah. I, I I want to make a, a point. Means mm. in this question, I means I am changing little bit point. Mm. Does this second statement always hold true? This second statement that v plus negative v will always be null vector. No, means but, it depends on how you add and how you. Means, uh, not visual way. The way it defined in question. If that uh -huh. that scalar and uh, addition uh -huh. uh, follow vector space, that uh, close uh, addition and multiplication, whatever the rule has been given. Uh -huh. And in that case, if V is vector space, uh -huh. then it is necessary that second condition has to be true. Is 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 this statement correct? Mm. V is already a vector space. Then, ma'am, it's uh, already means that this condition is verified, right? No, no. He's telling that there is a W which gives this. Then this W has to be minus V. That's what he's telling, right? If capital but, v but, is a is, oh, I mean, that is not always true, right? If the addition is defined, I have not found. No, no. He's telling he will follow the addition that's given in the question and the scalar multiplication ah, okay. here. Hmm. I have checked but, in uh, all, uh, all question I have done, and in all question it, it is being satisfied. If uh, W is minus V, then then only that is vector space. Means if it is not, then it could never be vector space. In the question I have solved till now. Mom, does that mean like uh, for every vector there is a unique data inverse? I guess. That yeah, for is every V possible. there is a unique W that satisfies this. No doubt. Yeah, so in, so in such way we can say like yeah, if if we do that, then that's another thing. But we cannot say this is equal to v plus negative v equal to zero because sometimes uh, it is changed because uh, depends on the zero vector and the operations they are given. No, no, no. Like v plus w, like the negative v should be equal to the zero vector. It will never be equal to the zero. Okay. No, what what was that? V plus negative V should be equal to should be no like or the zero vector is anything. Yeah. Okay. But why did you say it's never going to be equal to? No, no. I said it's it's going to be equal to the zero vector. I said it's okay. never going to be equal to the zero zero. Like sometimes ah, it can. Okay. Be Fine. Kind of okay. Ah, yeah, this is the additive identity, whatever that is. Ma'am, 
and also when we are finding w for this additive uh, inverse like v plus w equal to 0 we only focus on additive property we yes. never yes. touch this minus v that minus 1 into v that yeah. scalar multiplication property that is completely different right yes, yes. 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 you so don't need cannot, scalar multiplication to get the we don't yeah we don't need a scalar multiplication operation to get this w so we cannot equate this to minus 1 into v, that scalar multiplication uh, thing, whatever we have got. No, no. What he is telling us now no, no, we but have whatever a scalar said is actually We can equate said, it to this. That's what he is yes. telling. Yeah, yeah. So one, I, mean, I think one way to do there this could is be first find out the minus v. Different. First find out the minus v using the standard operators and then substitute the standard operators with the new operators like minus provided. v in the sense minus and if 1 it doesn't into work v, then it? it is not in the vector yeah, space yeah. minus 1 into v that's what he's telling that's what right it should it need not be equal no ma'am uh, ma'am very easy i think uh, if we define the scalar multiplication in different way mm -hmm. like uh, uh, c times v equal to alpha by c and uh, something something like that we manipulating like so usual addition but different scalar multiplication so for that case minus one times v is not equal is not addictive inverse of v but in that case that is not vector space also no that that is mm. what i am telling he's telling we have a vector space this is necessary condition for vector space and take. okay ma'am you could take this doubt in next session uh, no, or anyway. We can take one count. Uh, Ma'am, that multiplication one, no? can you please explain with an example? That Which previous one? one? Previous one, ma'am. Before uh, this needless step, uh, this, this multiplication, I could not understand this one as well. Uh, so it's defined like this. See, this is how it's defined. The scalar multiplication, the scalar gets multiplied only in the first component, not in the second component. Uh, yes, this one I understood, ma'am. But the uh -huh. way you did now, that uh, taking two elements and doing that, I just could not catch uh, how did it proceed. No, I'm so, saying this condition. Alpha plus beta into AB should be equal to alpha AB plus beta AB, right? Uh, okay, alpha plus beta times A and B will remain same as it is. Then alpha A and beta. Okay. Ma'am, then here, here in the second, after the second stage, no, alpha A plus beta A comma B. Hmm. After that, how did you, I just split it into by. With, no, with no, a... no. I did a mistake there. So that is what, that is the left hand side. The right hand side is what? Into A comma B is alpha A comma B plus beta A comma B, right? So this is alpha A plus beta A comma 2B, right? Yes. This is not equal to this. Okay. So these two are not equal. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me think about this. Can we build a like? A so this will actually or? work. So if we take a simple example where you no, if uh, something is true, we have to prove it, right? Not yes. to take no, no, I, I, yeah, yeah. So mm. one way, I mean, again, this may not be complete this. proof, but thing is that if you take a vector a b, and if you do a normal operation which is v plus minus one into v, mm. that will be zero, right? Under normal operators, when you have plus and minus. And yes. scalar multiplication. Okay. Now, if I go and let's say I replace the either the addition operator or the multiplication operator scalar with a mm. specific definition, mm. right? Now, even in those circumstances, v plus minus v should be equal to zero. No, why? If it is that's not, the question, no. Ma'am, ma'am, I think I have uh, found a small counter example, but I don't know whether I missed any point or not. Mm. Define it this way, like x one y one plus x two y two is hmm. equal to x1 plus x2 comma 0. OK. Yeah. Uh, just, write, just write down so that we don't miss it. Yeah. Hmm. x2 y2 is equal to x1 plus x2 comma 0. Hmm. And the vector space is just x comma y where x y belongs to r. 
So this satisfies uh, V1 plus V2 is equal to V2 plus V1 also, no? Okay. Yeah. In this case, uh, suppose there is an uh, there is a vector of one comma two. I want mm. to find its inverse, like additive inverse, mm. will be minus one comma anything, minus one comma five or minus one comma two. This is not a vector. This is not a vector. Then it should be. Okay, it should be unique. This is not a vector space. Is it so closed the under addition? The is to find out whether it's a vector space or not. Yeah. It, it is closed under addition. It is yes, associative. It's... Yes. It is commutative. Hmm. Ah, there is no zero vector, yes. right? No vector doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. Zero vector in the sense? Uh, like, for like, zero, 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 y plus zero comma uh, a comma b should mm -hmm. give you x comma y right but that's never going to happen because when you add you're putting the second entry as zero right okay yeah, yeah. it seems to be true means my intuition says it's right but i'm not able to connect it somewhere i feel there might be something missing as well anyway I think it also goes back to the definition of the vector space itself. I think uh, I, I can't think of it right now, but if I read the English on vector space, there seems to be a connection. I have to just sit down and write it. Ma'am, another... can I write it like this? Minus V is equal to, can I write it as 1 plus minus 1 into V? Right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, when the multiplication okay. is standard multiplication. No, 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 no. Even otherwise. I know alpha plus beta v is equal to alpha v plus beta v. Right? Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes. This is true always, irrespective of yes, because yes. it is a vector space. Okay. So I am taking my alpha to be 1 and beta to be minus 1. Okay. This is true, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the usual zero. Yeah. So this has to be the W, right? The inverse. But we have not defined no that zero. But, we, but zero. we don't want to arrive at usual zero, right? We want to arrive at the zero vector of that vector space. Right. We have not defined any operation that zero times zero. If Mm. If we write this way, we arrive at the usual zero vector. Yeah, yeah. So if somehow we can show that zero times any any vector must be zero, then this uh, this uh, result must hold true, right? No, but that that's not the case, no. Zero times See, v, we had v this vector space, right? Somewhere in some example. So here, zero times one comma y was defined to be one comma. That will zero, be zero, right? no? Huh? That will be zero in this case. Why? Why? Yeah, yeah this is the zero of the vector space. This is not zero comma zero. Now here we are getting zero comma zero, right? No. Why? Why we are getting zero comma zero? We are getting zero times v only, no? Ah, right. We need to show that zero times v has to be zero. Is the zero of the vector space? Is it um, on, Is it true or not? Ma'am, that scalar multiplication is two c yes. x comma y. This situation, this is perfectly true when zero v is equal to zero for that vector space. No, 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 no. He is like y is zero into v equal to zero comma zero. Like here. Okay. Could okay, you... it will be 1 comma 0 again. Ah. Ma'am, can I tell one thing? Could ah. you try to write? Yeah, that uh, usual addition and uh, mm. scalar multiplication is like uh, 2c x comma y. Okay. Okay. Ah. So for this one, the 0 vector is 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0, whatever maybe. Ah. Because usual addition. Uh, ah. So v is like 1 comma 2. Mm. So you compute this negative v. No, is this even a vector space? 
yeah that is a vector space no we just saw no it is not a vector space uh ma'am this can hello ma'am so are we done for the day uh, yeah we need are we done for the day uh, hi if you have doubts you can ask so on uh, on friday you will start from fresh right for vector space vector space yeah. again yes okay okay thank thank you ma'am thanks yes ma'am we need if we wish to verify this is a vector space or not so we need to come in that axioms one by one yes we cannot directly say uh, it, it is satisfies uh, this one and this one so it is not a vector space or not yeah if it does not satisfy any one it is not a vector space right yes ma'am so maybe uh, v plus minus v equal to 0 but uh, back end that means uh, further conditions may be fail yeah this is not a vector space this is exactly what happened here no alpha b or alpha is chosen to be 2c that's all see yes, here that's how it's defined right yes ma'am but uh, we cannot conclude it to v plus w equal to that zero vector that means w equal to minus v so we need a no it's not even a vector space here no he's telling if it is a vector space then it has to be that yes ma'am but uh, every vector space like uh, acting this property for sure that is a question ma'am ma'am ah huh, that is that is the question yes yeah is there any proof for that one no Why? that's what i'm thinking i guess we are just wasting time we are just missing out on some small element and uh, ma'am can can you write we could the... take it ma'am later on uh, could you yeah, do that yeah yeah type problem yeah. in graded assignment 3 comprehensive Uh, ma'am can you explain uh, activity question 1 uh, of week 3 first activity fifth question what is it ma'am it's the, about the vector spaces like addition x1 comma y1 uh, comma z1 uh, hmm. plus in bracket x2 comma y2 comma uh, z2 uh what is the addition uh, in in bracket it's x1 plus x2 comma 0 comma 0 okay so we just saw no that's not a vector space And ma'am, similarly for the scalar multiplication, ah. C multiplied by. No, forget by the scalar multiplication. With addition only, you can tell. Okay, ma'am. And uh, there is one more, like mm. uh, x one comma y one comma z one plus x two comma y two comma z two is equals to x one comma y one comma z one. Hmm. That's no. not commutative, no. See, did you understand why this is not a vector space? This one. Yeah, because zero. X y one plus y two zeros like that. Ah, uh, so something a comma b comma c. You you should get one comma one comma one, right? There should be a zero element, right? Yeah. But that's never going to happen because it's hmm. zero zero. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the other one, it is huh. this commutativity will not be satisfied, right? Okay. Ma'am, there is another question like uh, x1 comma y1 plus x2 comma y2 is equal to uh, for addition it's defined as x1 plus x2 plus y1 plus y2. Usual addition, okay? Not usual addition. X1 oh. plus x2 plus y1 plus y2 comma x1 plus x2 plus y1 plus y2. Oh, adding all the entries. Yeah, or, or adding all the entries. Is it this? Uh, yeah. Oh. Like that. So, uh, how can I uh, prove that it's not a vector space? Again, zero like, element uh, doesn't. Zero vector won't is, be there, right? Uh, actually, there is not a comma uh, in between x one plus x two in the second part. It's a plus. Ah ah ah! Sorry, sorry. Ah uh, yeah, like that. So if I say take one comma one and then I add it with a comma b, I'm going to get a plus b plus two comma a plus b plus two. Right. Mm. Okay. Let's take two. Mm. Then I get this. Right. Mm. This should be equal to one comma two. Right. Oh, That's yeah. never going to happen. No. Same entries. Same mm -hmm. coordinates. But here mm -hmm. I have different coordinates. Right. Mm. Okay. So uh, I cannot define it like uh, it's not equal to just x one comma. Um, x one plus x two comma y one plus y two. I can just write that's like the that. usual addition. Yeah. Ah, okay. So the usual addition is not equal to this particular addition. I can just uh equate like that. No, no, no. Why? Um, you need to compare usual addition with this. 
you just want to check whether with respect to this addition it is closed or not or mm -hmm. whatever so, um so how it can be like 1 comma 2 here i didn't understand that it's not no no i am picking any random element v plus 0 uh, should give you v right mm, there yeah. should be a zero that satisfies right mm does this belong to the given set r2 is the given set right yeah ah, so i this belongs to that right mm. so there should be a zero vector there should be a vector which uh, gives so me 1 1 comma 2 plus a comma b is equal to 1 comma 2 right oh okay 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 so uh, this a comma b is uh, taken as a zero vector okay ha ah, yeah okay ma'am thank you suppose there is a vector mm -hmm. this is what happens this mm. and this both are the same components right mm. a plus plus 3 that's mm. never going to be equal to 1 and 2 yeah, simultaneously mm. yeah correct correct okay ma'am thank you ma'am and no, yeah. activity question 3.1 question of uh, which you discussed uh, right now ma'am uh, ma how my doubt is how to Yellow approach type. such questions because i get really confused looking at uh, uh, these if you could just uh, like give example or just solve one any of any of them like just v1 i would it would be clear to me right you want me to prove that it is a vector space or or not i mean how to approach it mama i get very confused did you go through the book the math to book that is there on the portal it it has all these examples solved in detail okay ma'am okay i'll yeah. i'll look at ma'am ha huh. Ma'am, I have posted a few questions about four to five hours ago. Okay. Will you please solve them? Or solve any... in the sense you want solutions to problems or doubts Just that you want? Yeah, doubts exactly. That uh, oh. I am stuck somewhere in between. Okay. So, so I did not get any response from there, or maybe if someone just answers them. Yeah, I'll do that after the session. Okay, and ma'am, well, is this graded B done for the day, ma'am? Can we leave? Ah, yeah, graded three. The genotype is graded three, is it? Yes, ma'am. I'll open the solution. Okay, let me open the question first. Ma'am, okay. here how the generation propagates and how to solve the seventh question. Seven question. Okay, so in genetics, a classical example of dominance is okay. P is maybe round or wrinkled. Uh, three combinations. Okay. R R individuals have round P is small. Okay, in R R, the R genotype. Okay, fine. So if you have a capital R, it's going to take the capital R property, right? Right one. That is uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, considering R R with R R, this gives R R. Therefore, the possibilities on R square. Okay, fine. Next, considering R R with R R, the offspring will have equal chances to be of genotype R R and genotype. Okay, half half. Therefore, the probabilities are this. Finally, considering R R with R R, it's always. R R okay fine so that's going to be this. The matrix representing this observation is given by okay. The initial distribution vector is denoted by this. Okay, so you have a set of P's. Means you have a set where you have x not the first component times. of capital r r the second component types of r r and ah uh, okay for any positive integer n the distribution after n generations is denoted by x n and it is given by this okay fine okay so an experiment 100 pairs of parents with genotype okay so x not 1 is 100 ah uh, suppose from each crossing of each pair of okay okay fine ah uh, so what is given what is this 100 100 200 uh, that is yeah ma'am that is continuing yeah. that is x not or not um it 
Aura type parents is hundred and capital R. Are these the quite? Uh... Uh, so Bring right to this in on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One second. Let me first try to understand. Hundred pairs of parents with this. Pairs of parent means there are two means hundred times two hundred will be there. Suppose from each, uh, from crossing of each pair of parents with a single offspring, of parents a single offspring is produced. Okay, find the set of correct options. Mm. What is given? Ma'am, a capital R R. Uh, capital R R and capital R, they given the probability is uh, one zero zero, I think. Yeah. One, yeah. This. Uh, okay. So hundred pairs of parents. So they are taking the hundred pairs. So what is what is what are the what are the what the stuff they are getting is hundred hundred R R R pair, then zero mm -hmm. R small R pair, then there is no pair for R R. So that's why they are telling on the first row. Uh, Hundred pairs of parents with. Yes, ma'am. Actually, we are writing this row and column with that letters that is not easy to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I'm try trying to tell is so uh, capital R and capital R pairs forms the probability like one zero zero. So if I take for uh, mm -hmm. that probability, that means this table, this table back back. This one, right? One yes, zero yes. zero. Uh. Yeah, exactly. So we are taking one R R pair. So that is the probability. Like, if I taking one R R, then I will get an R R. Repress. Uh, rest of them is zero zero. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Suppose if I taking oh 100, right. Yeah, hundred. Then I will get R R is. Uh, I will after that. Uh, um, there won't be any small R R, right? Yes, yes. there is no possible to get a small R. Okay, that or option is there. There is no option with round. What is small R? Wrinkled is wrinkled. it? Wrinkled, wrinkled. Yeah, so only we get round. Shape. Ah, this one is right. Okay, there will be no offspring with wrinkled piece. Okay, yes. there all will be offspring with round have. piece because you have all capital R's. Everyone has a capital R, so yes, you are okay. going to get round piece. Okay. All offspring will have round piece. Will yes, yes. All offspring have round piece. Ah, yeah. Fine. There won't be any wrinkled, so everything has to be round. Madam, okay. these two hundred pair, hundred pair are being given additional information for us to be confused. Is it? No. The last two options will be useful for that. Ah. Uh. Uh, actually, that on, on that probability you will get hundred zero and zero. Uh, another one is uh, they are given like two hundred or hundred. Oh, another one is also hundred, like so fifty fifty and zero. So then last one is two hundred. So zero two hundred and zero. So you have the column like R R capital R small R and R R R. So last two options based on that question. So what is at least and at most? Mm, right. What is the matrix coming out here? Yeah, the matrix is hundred zero zero and fifty fifty zero and this one zero two hundred zero. Yes, ma'am. Ah, you just have to multiply this with the uh, that parent elements. Yeah, the you have to pre multiply right hundred two hundred and hundred uh, so that you get the next generation. Yes, this is the current generation. X n minus one is given. The next generation is X n. You want to find out that. So you multiply hundred hundred and two hundred with p to get X n. The next generation. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Please do it on X. We are not. If you can see how it has been done on the paper, yeah, man. Hundred, hundred, two hundred, with one what zero. about that? Yes, ma'am. One zero zero one half zero half zero. One zero zero half half zero. Zero one zero. Two one zero, and we will get one fifty two fifty zero mm -hmm. as a result. Instead of eighteen, as before, half it. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. So there is nothing with R R. Ma'am, zero is small R R. This is capital R small R. Ah. Uh, And then how how will be next generation? 
how will we get this, this is the x uh, x not uh, sorry x1 this generation. is the current generation this is the parent x not generation uh not x oh, whatever at some point these are the yeah. parents these are the children so, so, so how, how will how, how will you go go to the next generation if you want to go to the next generation these will be the parents right no i think we need to have this 150 by 2 to 50 by 2 right no why because, because that 100 are not rr that 100 are rr a dash rr in question c in question <coughs> in question what Mamba, it will still give you the uh, capital RR now when it is being. 100 pairs up in 7th one, yes, ma'am. Uh, oh. So, what do you have? You have no offspring with RR that is wrinkled piece. Every offspring has round piece because both these combinations give me round. And there is at least 100 with RR that is what is. Ah, there is at least 100 with RR and there is at least 200 with RR. In yes. fact, we know what exactly the number is. Okay, yes. ma'am. This, this much I understood. But ah. see the parent. That 100 is not RR. That is RR dash R R smaller. What? In seventh one. Seventh one. It is in seventh one. Ah. 100 pairs of parent genotype RR dash RR. Uh, no, no, which means that the pairs, one is RR, mean the mother is RR, the father is also RR, that way. That's going to give you an output of RR. See, it's like this blood group we have. No, if mom, is, mom and dad are of the same blood group, this child also gets the same blood group, that way. Okay. And when, it, when you have cross of blood groups, the one that dominates is getting the okay ma'am this much i understood uh -huh. but how will we how will we get to the second generation so there is a formula second generation no, question no, is not asked sir see, see, this is the children okay now you have to see yes, see this is the children you have you have 150 in rr in this you have 250 and then you have in this zero. You have to see whom these are mating with. Only then you will get the next generation, right? So without that, we could not get the next generation. Ah, okay. means if you chance. say that these are the ones, means this 400 kids are going to, these are the parents for the next generation, then you can just use this. But what if they are going to, these are the husbands and the wives come from another family or something like that. See that that is what this RRRR says, right? Like Madam, mom, dad, dad. Madam, actually, with the given options, first generation is enough. We yeah. did not think about Only generation. first generation is asked. Why we are becoming uh, uh, what you call because as, in, in the ninth question, there is X1 means next generation, yeah. X1 um, and X2 are there. Okay, yeah, and X0 is given actually, I guess. Yeah, X0 is given. No, here you needn't bother about uh, what is R, what is small R, nothing. No, you're directly yeah. given. That formula is given X my X and ah. N times P equal to. So you needn't bother whether mom is this, dad is this, or anything, right? If directly it's given to you. So this but, is the but information. Here that you have. is not being satisfying, no, means, uh, means logic <laughs> is not being happening. Only the abstract concept means the formula give the answer. No, no. See, here it's not given that you are using this and you're getting some vectors. No, we are using X0, no, the, the given thing. that how ah. many, In question, in ninth question, there is X0 given. And X1 will represent the next generation. X2 will represent the next generation. So how, how does that represent the next generation? Because in main question, it is given that X0 is the first uh, zero most generation. Hmm. And X1 is the next generation. A A Xn is the nth generation. So okay, X so then the parents are the children of one generation is the parents of the next generation. But that should be half, no, means they cannot meet to itself, no. No, that is how peas work. <laughs> <laughs> 
they meet itself <laughs> yeah <laughs> no uh, it, it is just possible but then in turn after lara all lara this conversation is what off <laughs> ha huh. 